My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. Are we live? We're hopping and rolling. Hopping and rolling. We're, uh, we're getting a couple things still set up just a little bit. We're a little nervous about um, all of the moving parts out here. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll kind of yak for just a minute. We'll show you we're letting everybody find us and say hello and um, log on. So uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll do a, I wish I could show you the, uh, contraption here, having the camera on the tripod on a chair and lots of cords everywhere, but we think this will work. So um, we'll kind of take you around the room just a little bit. So this is the way that we always do it when we do our um, 10, 20, 30 in our Christmas open house. We always have a lot of events this time of year. We do our Christmas open house. We do our Black Friday special we do a deadline retreat, which is where everybody comes and brings all of their stuff in their pajamas and they stay for three or four nights and sew all of their Christmas gifts. And then, um, and then we do this 10, 20, 30 class, which is 10 things that you can make in uh, under 30 minutes for less than 20 bucks. And so, um, but intermixed in here is a bunch of our Christmas favorites because we might have 45 new people every year that come to the class, but a lot of you guys are new to our channel and new to us. So we do have some of our fun best ever Christmas specials that we've sort of thrown in here. But even with all of that, we really think that we can get this done in 90 minutes. We have a little timer going on. So we'll just show you the room a little bit. Brianna, people are saying hello. Yeah, this is Log on. Oh, yeah. good. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, Deb watching from the shop. Oh, Deb from the shop. Oh, yeah, Deb, you better take Lots notes of, of all the things we're going to say of that of you're going to do for them. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Oh, Joanne. Oh, good. Oh, oh, Claudia. Oh, Claudia. Claudia came in the shop the other day. How's the knee? New knee. Oh. And Linda, Linda Bryant Smith. Hope she's feeling good. Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. Well, keep saying hello to everybody. So we're just going to show you those of you guys that are not local where we are is this is our um, event center. So we have the shop that we've had for 21 years um, in Efreda, but in Soap Lake, which is four miles north, we have um, a retreat center. We've had this now for four years. We've slowly been adding to it for four years and we have condos and bungalows in this great big, huge 2000 square foot event center. So if you come up here for a retreat, um, there's 56 uh, lights in here with daylight, 100 watt daylight bulbs, a lot of windows that at the moment are blocked. And if you can see through the doors here, you can't really see because we had to change all of the light, but through the doors here, right across the street from us is the lake. So those of you that are not from here, if you go to YouTube and you type in Soap Lake, Washington, there is great drone footage of Soap Lake. It's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic little town, very, very friendly. And there's also a video by Kathy um, that talks about Soap Lake. If you pan around, um, we're just going to kind of walk around and we've got um, some new minky tutorial things we want to show you. We have um, a bunch of our Advent calendar, some that um, were sold out on our Christmas special that we just had, but we're going to show you what to do with them, um, stockings, that sort of thing. And we're going to do door prize drawings as we go. So we'll show you how to, how to do that. And um, the other thing too, again, is that if you're new to the stuff that we do, it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not as much like a crafty thing. We are quilters. And so it really is about fabric and it really is about making gifts that um, will be used um, throughout the years, time and time again. So it's not so much. Um, I mean, I love those shows 
a, what is it that you go to the dollar store and you spend five bucks and then you can make these fun things. So, but this is not like that. This is very different. But anyway, we think that you'll learn a lot. And here's Brianna's little central hub. Hey guys. So you said <laughs> I'm hello. I'm seeing us here. Seeing us. All right. So Brianna's going to be over here. Is, I don't even, we'll see. I might look <laughs> techie, but I'm totally, I don't even know. <laughs> She's a techiest. So. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. So, um, so she's going to be commenting and answering your questions as we go so that I can, um, keep going along and she'll know when to interrupt me and say, wait, 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 mm -hmm. go back. You didn't answer that question or whatever, or where is that? And yep. we'll, um, occasionally do some commercials and come to her as we move some things. And can they see Robert in the corner? A little bit. This is Brianna's handsome husband is back there. He's our light boy. So he's going to be moving right. lights and stuff. Yeah. He's Some he's people have thrilled. pool boys. Pool boys. We got light boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Are enough people on? Should we start? Are we good? All right. So we're going to bring this thing all the way over here. All right. Our light boy. We're going to start over here. Right. So, um, so we're going to start on this side. We kind of talk about this as we go, but first, um, I'm just going to spend just two minutes talking about packaging your Christmas gifts. Um, I think sometimes what happens when you make a homemade gift for somebody for Christmas, um, you know, how do you package that towel or the apron or whatever it is so that, you know, there's a little bit more pizzazz to it. So, we have a couple things and I just wanted to show you that I sort of have a formula. And so my formula is to start with, uh, start with some sort of a vessel. So in this case, what I have is just kind of this really cool basket that has um, a, a Santa on it, but it might be a cup, it might be a bowl. Um, and then something else just to kind of make it look pretty so that you can tuck something in there. So I always use a lot of paper. I also always like to have either sprigs of something or a ornament. And you'll see that there's a bit of a theme for an ornament as we go along and we're packaging things. And some people tell me that they wait until the end of the year and then they go in and they buy out the Christmas ornaments that are on sale. That has never worked for me because at the end of the year, there's nothing cute left. So I do exactly the opposite. I go in right away and buy the cutest ornaments and use those in the packaging. So I do it a little bit different, but I do like a kind of a cool ornament to go with it. And then the other thing, of course, that you need is ribbon. Um, the best ribbon that I like is actually the stuff that you can get at Costco. It's pretty affordable and it's a really nice high quality ribbon. And then of course tags. And we have a couple different spots where we're going to show you kind of some cool options for making your own gift tags. And then once you have that, so like in this case, if what you've done is a hand embroidered towel and um, that's your gift, because there's so many of us, I think, that do make gifts. And I think when you're, especially for an adult, most adults, you, I don't know, you kind of go out and buy what you need anyway. And it's hard to get a gift for somebody when they don't really need anything. And so that's where personalized gifts, I think it's really nice if you know what they like, what their kitchen is, what their kitchen colors are, um, something else about them that you can make it kind of personal. So anyway, um, nice little hand embroidered towel. And then again, if you put the ornament on it, um, it makes it a really pretty little package. Same thing with this one. There's a little towel or just tying it with just a really cute cookie cutter, again, makes it really cute. The other thing that you can do, these are just 88 cents at Walmart and it's just a little whisk and it holds all of your Hershey Kisses perfectly. So you can do that as well. The other thing is a coffee cup. If you have, again, a hand embroidered towel or machine embroidered towel, if you find a matching cup, that's something else that works well. And then all you have to do with that when you've added that is if you add just a little bit of paper to that, and then again, some sort of a sprig or an ornament, something else that'll make it look kind of cute. This is, and I don't have this anywhere on the thing, but I'm just gonna show you guys this. This is just one of those classics. Um, we do have a pattern for this, but you barely need one. And this is just um, a uh, pot holder. And of course, as long as you're using the insole bright in there, it's just a, a happy art of fabric to nine inch pieces. And then you're binding on there and then you're good to go. Um, 
Same thing with this one. If, you know, what you've made are these fantastic, um, cool uh, chenille pot holders, you can do the same thing. Just fold that up, add a cookie mix and a big cookie cutter. And again, it's kind of a cute, cute little package. Your vessel might even be a bowl. And so you can put in your homemade apron. You can add some uh, hand knitted washcloths, add a soup mix. And then the other thing that I tend to add is the plastic. This is going to make a really horrible sound. But if you add this, this is inexpensive. And if you put it up there, all you have to do is just take your blow dryer to it and it'll shrink it just a little bit, and make it kind of nice and tight. So you can make something nice and big or small. If the whole idea too is um, COVID has eaten into your Christmas budget and um, maybe a lot of it is we're making gifts just because it can be more affordable. If you know how to knit or crochet, these are always popular. I love, 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 love all of my hand knitted and hand crocheted um, washcloths. This is all I use because they last for forever. So if you can knit a square or crochet a square in any kind of a pattern, I think that the little cotton yarn is, gosh, do you think it's like a buck? It's probably a dollar. Yeah. And I think you can make a, a couple of them with one hank. And then all you need to do is if you just have kind of a cool Christmas plate, you could just put a cookie cutter on that and wrap it up. Or I found these really cool napkins. You could put that on there. It makes it kind of a cute project. So let's see, we have our first, um, oh, well, wait, let me come back to here. The other thing too, in terms of a vessel is maybe what the gift is, is the bag itself. And so this pattern is called the trendy tote super, super fast and it stands up. So if somebody um, likes yarn, maybe they are a knitter, maybe they're a reader. It's just a nice little travel tote that kind of stands up because the batting that's in here is, um, oh, Brianna, what's the name of it? Uh, soft and stay, soft and stay batting. So it's kind of nice. And then again, same thing. You can just tie a ribbon, put a ornament on there and you're good to go. Um, oh, the other thing too is another really good bag that you can use as a Christmas bag is um, we have a video that went up, what, about a week ago, I think. And it's the, it's, what do we call it? The easiest ever, easiest shopping bag ever. So you can search for that. And it's just sort of a nice option, either something to put in with your Christmas package or something to make as the vessel for holding your Christmas package. And then um, the other thing is that if you are a knitter, we wanted to mention this, uh, we've been editing all day, taking things out because we knew we were not gonna have enough time to talk about everything. And so we already have things started that we thought would work well for our Mother's Day um, uh, gift palooza. And so, um, but I just want to mention quickly that if you, um, if you like the idea of knitting these, there's another yarn and it's called Ooh, it's the scratchy, scratchy one. I was gonna, I can never remember the name of it. It's called, Brianna's gonna look it up. Um, or maybe somebody will think of it, but it's a funny little scratchy yarn and it's not the scratchy, scratchy stuff that you use for, um, that you use for your dish rags, but it's one that you use for your face. And so what happens is it's the same idea. You can go ahead. It's and, called scrubby yarn. Scrubby. It's called Scrubby. That's exactly, did somebody say? Yeah. Yeah. Scrubby. It's fantastic. So it's the same thing. And then when you do your face, it's like a loofah. So you can, um, uh, um, what's it called when you take all the, exfoliate your skin. So anyway, it's really, really nice. I have several of these, throw them in the washer, throw them in the dryer, they wash up perfectly. So we have our first gift. And the way that we're doing our door prize drawings is, we have a trivia question. And so the first person to accurately answer the question wins the prize. And so what our prize is, first of all, I'll tell you what the prize is. And we, um, uh, this is Soap Lake Soap. 
So since we're in Soap Lake and we love Soap Lake, and um, maybe this will go to somebody from farther away, but what we have is Soap Lake soap, and this is cranberry scented, and then a little scrubby that um, I made, this one. Um, and so we have this, and it's going to go to the person who accurately answers, what is the number one most viewed movie? Christmas movie. Christmas movie. The number one. In the the number States. one. Number one in the United States. Yeah, we should say that. The number one most viewed Christmas movie in the United States. While we're waiting for that answer. It's a wonderful life. Melanie L. That was fast. Yes. Melanie yes. got it. Oh, look at you guys. Oh, they're so good. They all got like, They all got it. Yes. You know, I thought that was what it was. And then I thought, oh, maybe it was a Christmas uh, story. Harry you're my girl. That's why I said her mom asked. As, oh, 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 for sure. Hands down. Yeah, it's not um, which one is our didn't, favorite. Didn't even make top five. Guys. No, but what one? Oh. What was number five? Number five was, was like, Home Alone. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas Carol was number five. Over Christmas four. Carol, I thought was number two. Muppets Christmas. Carol. Muppets Christmas Carol was number two. That's just wrong. All right, Brianna, put the name on the winner. Um, Fun fact, we've got uh, Martina from Ireland. Oh, Martina! She I said... Gotta, I gotta come back oh. from all of these Christmas movies. She said... Oh, good. Um, it's 11 p.m. on oh. a wet, windy night, but sitting here in front of the fire, watching us. Oh! I someone um, from Thades of Greece. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, it's hanging out. So we've got Greece and Ireland. What time is it in... What time is it in Greece? Oh, she did not say. Maybe she'll come in. Late. Um, Late. Elaine, no, e -L -E -N well, we'll, we'll, be, yeah. we'll try to be interesting enough to keep you awake. Lots of Southern males happening. Oh, good. <laughs> good. They're definitely down there hanging out with us. So oh, we've got good. Georgia, we've got Texas. We've got um, lots of Washington State um, ladies. We've got local, our local girls. Are oh, good. All right, good. All right, good. Oh. She says it is uh, 1 30. It must be 1 30 tomorrow. 30 tomorrow. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> We're going to, we have to send her New something. York. Oh, that's Maybe. fantastic. Oh, yes. that makes me happy. Well, good. Well, hopefully, we'll. 1 p.m. in Hawaii. 1 p.m. in Hawaii. Oh, early there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but you're in Hawaii. So, right. was that Janet? Was that my friend Janet? That from Hawaii. Oh. I'm sorry here. I was going to try not to be all distracted with my friends. S. Marie. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to start with some kids sections. So we just wanted to mention that um, Eliza and I, my granddaughter, who's seven, and I have been doing a beginner series. And maybe you've watched some of them. Maybe you haven't. These are the ones that we've already done. We've done five. We have three left. And you will see the three that are left. They're amidst the, the things that are going on. But um, we wanted to do a beginner series and not just for kids. It's something that would be appropriate for kids, but we have a lot of people that took up sewing after making masks. And so we have a lot of beginner techniques and we just wanted to do a little spoiler alert that we are going to, um, we are going to start the series again in January. So we have eight projects through this series, and then we're going to start with eight new projects um, starting in January. So that'll be kind of fun. But um, there's a lot of people that do so with their grandkids. And so we have a couple different things that are sort of fun that we just wanted to mention um, that were fun things that you could either gift to them for them to be able to make, or you could help them make for somebody else as a gift. So one thing we like to mention is there's a lot of different black and white fabric that's easy to color. And so this is one. And gosh, what do you think, Brianna? We must have probably five or six online that are similar to this. And in fact, one of the specials that we did on the 12 Days of Christmas was actually a a pillowcase panel that you could color. And so what's nice about that is that you can go ahead and color these. And what we did is we packaged some where we put some fabric in there, some appropriate fabric markers that are not going to bleed. They don't wash off. They are washable, dryable. They're absolutely permanent uh, with no bleeding. And then this little pattern. And so what will happen is this one was not colored. We 
sewed it before um, we had a chance to color it. But anyway, it'll end up being something like this. But what happens with that pattern whoops, is that you can make, there's six different sizes in there. So you can make anything you want or multiples. This is one for little tissues because, you know, of course we need all of that stuff now. So anyway, you can make any size you want. You can do just the pattern if you'd like that, but we did put some kits together for you. Um, the other thing is that if you are somebody who has an embroidery machine, what you can do is there's probably lots of different um, designs on your embroidery machine where you could just do a quick little embroidered block and have that ready to go again for somebody just to go ahead and color and turn into a pin cushion if you wanted to or if they wanted to or maybe a little mug rug of some sort. One thing that I would mention is that if you are not using fabric markers, if you've decided to use crayons or colored pencils, if you want to make it permanent, what you want to use is this, and I'll put this down so she can get a good shot of it, but it's called textile medium. We sell it in this large one or in a smaller two ounce. And all you have to do is you take off the lid, you dip your paintbrush in it, and you just brush it over the top of it, just over the top of what you have colored. And then what happens is it has turned that into basically like fabric ink. And it doesn't change the look of it at all. It doesn't make it shiny. It doesn't make it stiff. It doesn't do anything. It just makes sure that your your crayons and your colored pencils do not wash out. So textile medium is something that you need. And the other thing too is that we've done different projects over the years where if you take your little Delta cream coat, just those little 88 cent paints, if you mix, um, let's see, I think it's, I, I always get it backwards. It's either one part paint and two parts of this. I should put my glasses on or one part of this and two parts paint. And tells you right on there, mix it on a paper plate, and then it turns that Delta cream coat, just that inexpensive acrylic paint into fabric paint. And so if you do want to, we've done outside pillows and we've done different things using this. So it's really good stuff, totally washable, um, absolutely permanent. Um, the other thing that we put together, these were kind of fun. We just did these, we just did these as a quick little thing just for Christmas. And I don't have Eliza's here to show you. I apologize for that. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to do some fun little embroidery stuff. You will see this again when you see um, our embroidery class that we're doing. So this is just a simple little embroidery. If somebody, you know, maybe younger wants to do something kind of fast, but what there is in here is there's a couple pieces of cardstock. And so this could end up being a Christmas card. It could end up being an ornament. You could do a couple different things with it. There's a, um, an 18, a size 18 tapestry needle in here and some floss and then this little sheet is in there to show you different ways that you can go ahead and stitch your uh, Christmas tree if you'd like to and then there's also an extra sheet in there so that you can print off more if you'd like to like to so just for something kind of fun if somebody maybe doesn't have the dexterity to be able to really do hand embroidery but they kind of want to do a little project in any way it makes it kind of easy. Um, and then these, these are just kind of a classic. These are fun things. We do these a lot and we just wanted to show you that there's some fun little secrets and things that you can do. So, um, these are just basic Sharpie permanent markers, nothing weird, nothing fancy. They don't have to be fabric markers. And all you have to do is if you just get a couple of them and you can use dollar store plates, but, um, Walmart and Target, they have a little better quality for a buck 50. So it doesn't have to be dollar store. You can get some nice white plates and then all you have to do is just draw something on there. You could be all kinds of crazy using every color you want. You could do something kind of simple. You could use multiple colors. You could have a little contest, have each of the kids um, design something. You could do it on a plate or you could do it on a mug if you'd like to. Anything where you have kind of a, a blank canvas that's kind of fun. Well, here's the trick to it. If you don't like what you did, acetone takes it off. So all you need is just a little cotton ball, put it on your acetone, 
wash that, wipe that off, and then wash and dry the plate and start over. And then as soon as you have it the way that you'd like it, you just bake it. Put it in the oven at 300 degrees for 20 minutes. And then this little permanent marker will be absolutely permanent. It will not come off. Uh, it uh, doesn't wash up. It's totally dishwasher safe. So kind of a fun thing to do. You can also do it on clear plates if you'd like to, but you can see it has a little different look if you do it to a clear plate. This one has some silver and gold that we did. Um, you could also do like a, um, a uh, vase if you'd like to do that. And then this one, what we did was if you are making a mug rug or something to go with it, then all you have to do is you could put something in there and kind of trace it. So that's really where the clear one comes up kind of nice is that you can trace something. So you can do the same thing with a clear plate or if you're really brave, make a big Christmas platter because what grandma would not love a beautiful decorated Christmas platter, um, something to close out 2020 with um, something really cool, have all of the kids decorate that. So it would be kind of fun. And again, you could do a white one, you could do any color you want. Just keep in mind that whatever colors you use, you wanna make sure that they're gonna show up. Um, the other thing that we have done with the Christmas plates, and again, this is just kind of a classic, is the decoupage. I think a lot of people do this, but um, I've seen people do it with um, napkins, and we prefer to do it with fabric. We feel like it lasts longer um, and is prettier and way more vivid with fabric. And if you've not done this before, again, you're just going to start with just your clear, um, inexpensive plate. And again, a dollar at the dollar store or a dollar 50 at Target or Walmart. And all you have to do is we just put it upside down on top of a bowl. And then you start with one little layer of decoupage. And then you go ahead and take your fabric. And a fabric like this, really just a 10 inch square is plenty. And one like this would be absolutely beautiful because it's got just that little bit of sparkle to it. And if it has a little bit of sparkle, it'll totally show up. So then that's all you do is you just put your little layer on there, lay that over the top of it, put another layer on it. After you've got one layer on, then you'll come down and go ahead and cut off the edge. And then we put three layers on and we do let it dry uh, in between each layer. And then after we're done, after it's dried for 24 hours, then you just go ahead and put a clear sealer on it. And you can do a regular clear sealer, or we have found this fun little sealer with a little bit of glitter in it. There's something kind of special about that little bit of glitter. What is it that you call it, Brianna? Um, girls sawdust? Oh, yes. Yes, Robert yes. Harper is all about uh, good stuff. We have sawdust all over our house and dirt. Yeah. But me and Harper are um, Glitter. <laughs> glitter. So um, they are not dishwasher safe. You do have to hand wash um, and be a little bit careful with them. But again, if you are delivering cookies to somebody, or this is our little birthday plate, um, it's kind of a fun little plate to do. And I wanted to mention that there are so many projects here that if you just had a, um, a, a layer cake of Christmas fabrics. And a layer cake is of course 10 inch squares. There's a ton of great ones in here. You could do plates, you could do, there's all kinds of things out here that we're gonna show you. And so this is just a nice little assortment of Christmas fabrics to get a bunch of things done. Um, oh, the other thing, this was here, I wanted to mention that um, Play-Doh. Um, we did our little video with the boys and we did um, a Play-Doh recipe. So um, uh, most of my kids don't like Play-Doh at their house because it ends up in everything, the carpet, dog, the, I don't know, Brianna had her whole list of where the Play-Doh ends up. So we have Play-Doh at Nana's house, but, um, but that's okay. It's fun to make and um, um, old cookie cutters work really well with uh, with new soft Play-Doh. And what's funny is that um, purchased Play-Doh is not nearly as soft as homemade stuff. So if you haven't done that, you'll wanna check out that recipe. Um, and then these again, just old classics, but these were fun. The kids love making these. So you can just do an old can that we've painted. And then again, just some cool fabric. And this is just stuff that you already have. You don't have to buy anything new, find something that's kind of cool, 
um, cut it out, decoupage it on top. And then all you have to do is just add a little bit of wire to that. And again, we talked earlier about having some sort of a vessel. So if you want to give somebody some cookies and that's what you're going to give them, maybe the mailman or somebody for Christmas, you could give them something that's kind of cute, you could make a little plate or, um, a different kind of a can. And we have a couple of them down here that we've done different things too. This one, we just had some fabric that we loved so much that we went ahead and made, um, we actually added some batting to it and we didn't want to decoupage it. We just wanted to layer the fabric on there. One more thing about decoupage um, is that uh, the little coasters. So these are some fabrics. I think Brianna has these online. These are kind of fun. This is from a company that um, I think it was called American, American Treasures, Old American Antiques. And so they had purchased, these are actual labels from different products. And so they purchased the copyright to it and they made these little squares. They're a little bit spendy, but you get four different, they're all different. And I think that there's maybe, I don't know, four or five different types, but I love them. I kind of love that vintagey thing anyway. And what's included in the pattern is a, um, uh, or included in the, the print, the fab, the printed fabric is a pattern for pot holders, which is kind of nice, but what I did with them is I just put them on these tiles and these are 77 cents. And so you just buy these little tiles and then you just put your um, printed fabric on there and you just decoupage it. And same thing, we just did three layers and then we put a layer of the acrylic spray on there. And then you can just cut a little piece of felt for the back. The other thing that you can do is you can put these on the back and this is just those little I don't know what they are. I think that you put them on like lamps and stuff on the bottom of lamps so they don't scratch your tabletops, but you can put those down there also. And this one, this one is old. I use this one every single day. Is it upright? So this is Jared, my youngest son. So he's 25 now. And I got this for Christmas in 2002. 2002, and I use this every single day. This sits um, next to my chair in my bedroom and I put my coffee cup right on Jared's face every single day. And so, um, and it, it, it still is great. It still is great. No photo has lifted up. So I like to use the fabric. You can also use photos if you'd like. It is nice to go ahead and date the back of it. I did these, these, we took a special trip before COVID, right before COVID. We went to um, New Orleans, and so these are some cool pictures from New Orleans. So same thing, just to remember back in the time when we could travel. Then, um, so anyway, kind of fun little gifts. And then the other thing that you can do, this fabric behind me, this is available, Brianna, this is running yardage, right? And this is on the website at the moment. This is currently on the website. It's not really a panel. So what you could do with this is you could get enough running yardage that all you'd have to do is put a piece of blue minky on the back of it, and it would be a super cute quilt. But because of the size of it, it works perfect for a little larger tile. And this piece of tile, oh, there's no price on it, but I think that this piece of tile was probably about a dollar. But same idea if you wanted to make it a trivet instead of a coaster, you could do the same thing. So it's a nice thing to do if you have some fabric that is just super cute and maybe way too cute to cut up. That's what this one is too. This panel is again, as of this moment right now, this is on the website. And this is Annie Downs. I just love her artwork anyway. She's from Hatched and Patched. She's from Australia. And um, it's just kind of cute. So she has just these little ones. There's eight of them on here. And then there's this center wreath and the words it says, love, cherish, hope, joy, and peace. And then it just has a little tree. There's all kinds of things. I look at this and think, oh my gosh, the edge of a towel. There's all kinds of fun things that you could do with that. So a couple of panels that we picked out that we thought were kind of fun. Um, this one is another panel. I'm just going to show this briefly because this one, Brianna, this one's online, right? Yes, it's 
called to be jolly. To be jolly. And so you can see I cut one of them out, but these are like these perfect little sizes for mug rugs. And then there's a couple of bigger ones. I kind of like the color. It's not that traditional Christmas. There's a little bit of teal in there. There's some peach. There's some more modern colors that are kind of fun. And I was just sort of playing around. I went and got these for the back of my coaster. And I ended up with these great big, huge ones. And I thought, well, what would you do with that? And then I thought, oh, it's exactly the right size. So what I did was when you peel this off, this is really sticky. And so I took one of those and then I just wrapped it around and it stuck. And then I stuck it to another one. And so you just have this, you know, two minutes. And for about, I don't know, 50 cents, just this cool little mug rug. So I don't know. I thought it was just sort of goofy, but, but, um, but I like the fabric and there was other things that I was planning on doing with that. Um, all right. So let's see, let's do another door price drawing. What should we draw for? Well, I'm going to draw for these. All right. I'm going to draw for... We're gonna start our little kitchen section. And so we have two of our, no, I'm gonna do a cookbook because I feel like we've drawn for this a couple times before. I'm gonna do a cookbook. We specifically ordered this cookbook for um, this time of year because there's different things that we'll end up making, whether it's um, um, oven mitts, uh, microwavable bowls, there's um, towels, mug rugs, all kinds of things down there. It's always kind of fun just to throw a cookbook. There's something about quilters that we like, um, quilting magazines and quilting books and cookbooks. So anyway, this one we thought looked really good. There's a lot of really good information in here and it's, um, it's um, wholesome food. So it's all, um, it's all real food. There's no packaged anything in there. So we'll throw in this cookbook. And the question is, is everybody ready? Brianna, are you ready? We'll see if you know the, oh, you know the answer to this. What? Don't say it out loud. According to Buddy the Elf, what are the four basic food groups? That's going to go fast. They're thinking. They're thinking. They're thinking. If it'll stay up. Oh, Peggy McAddy. Peggy McAddy. That's right. Candy. Candy. Yeah. <laughs> candy. Candy canes. Candy yes. corns and syrup, okay. or syrup. <laughs> That's right. All right, Robert. Will you take this over to Brianna? And she'll get her information and we'll mail this cookbook. We ended up, I think we ordered like a dozen of these. So we have a few on the website and you can add this. It's kind of a cool book. So anyway, we liked it. So some of the things that we have, you guys have probably seen this before. We've mentioned it before, but this is um, the hot stuff oven mitt. So what this is, is this is that um, Teflon, Teflon. So it withstands what? I interrupt for just like two seconds. Yeah. I have a couple of people wanting to watch us and shop at the same time, but they missed my other video of how to do a split screen. Oh, let's do that. So I'm going to take my, my mic off for a second. Oh, I don't think you should take your mic off. Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. I'll pick her up. You can pick her up? Let me just lean in. Okay. I don't know. Oh, bye. Can you see it? Yes. So if you guys are trying to watch us and shop at the same time, um, down at the bottom of your keyboard, I don't know if you can see us, there's a little four pane window pane right here. So there's a control, an FN function key, and a four pane window. Hit that and an arrow key on the screen you want to do, and it will move one screen to the left or to the right. And then bring up another web page, maybe our fabricpatch.net and click well, that. Yes. <laughs> and then click your windows and the other arrow key at the same time. So I'm going to show you that real quick. Can you see it? So I'm going to do the window pane key on the left hand of my keyboard and at the same time hit an arrow and it plops out to the other side. And then I'm going to open up another window and I'm going to click it, do a window pane and my left arrow, and ba bam, ba bam, and so that's a technical term. Yeah, it's a techie term. 
Oh, no, watch. Now I have a screen issue. <laughs> oh, wait, we're getting it. We're getting it. Uh, Brittany's like, oh, I, I know what you did. In. Oh, I have to hit on the big button. So, yeah, so button. you can shop here and watch us here. So you don't miss anything. So you don't miss anything. So, all right, there you is. Or if you're like me and you just watch the YouTube on the television, you have your iPad in front of you. That's like all we watch anymore is YouTube. I love YouTube. I love watching normal people do normal things. Okay, are we good? The hot silicone goodness. Hot silicone goodness. It's not silicone. Is it silicone? It is silicone. It's silicone. Yeah, it's silicone. So it withstands temperatures of 500 degrees, which what are you taking out of your oven that's more than that? Nothing. So anyway, it's hot. It, it's, it's clear. And so what's nice about that is you can choose what fabric goes inside of there. Because what's happened is all these years that we have made oven mitts only to find out that we've burnt them, we've stained them, bad things have happened to them. So this is a way to make them look the way that they have always looked from the very beginning. So for this one we, that we made, we used um, um, chicken wings. There's chicken wings and then there's a little bacon cuff down here. So it's kind of fun. So we did, and the directions are really simple. It's kind of crazy. It's weird that you can sew right through that silicone and they work great. And so the way that they come is, this one is the pattern, all of the directions, and one silicone mitt for 18 bucks, right? Yeah. And then the refill is $9. And then that is just this. You don't get any directions or anything. You just get this. And then the other thing that she has come up with is a little trivet. So the same idea. You can see that um, it's the same idea. It's just a nice little... A smaller one and there's a large one or a smaller one and maybe I should open these up so you can see how big is the small and how big is the large this one I think is the large and then it's a funny thing because what happened with this gal we saw her at market thought it was the smartest thing that we'd ever seen got these this one is the large and then where were we we went to the next was it the next year that we were at market or we took Harper with us when we took Harper with us. Yeah. And um, we met this other guy. Hold on. Wait for Wait for This one is the small. This one is the large. So the small is still fine. But if you've got a big casserole dish, you'd want the large one. And these do come same, same thing. There's either um, directions or just refills. But what happened is we saw these. We went and um, what was the guy's name? Harper liked him. It was something about two lumps of sugar. Harper, Harper is not a man's person, mm -mm. as you guys probably know, but mm -mm. Um, she is not very affectionate. To, and not to men. She doesn't. Do, and she, no strangers at all. She thought he was fat, would sit on his lap. Yeah, giggled. Would play. It was super weird. It was super weird. He let her do it. Oh, no. But he was no, an older was, guy, super yeah, nice. Yeah, he was a papa. Yeah, he was a papa. Sweet. Yeah. He sold these. And what was kind of funny in they're already all done. And so we looked at him and said, oh, my gosh, where do you get these? Because we met this other gal. And he says, oh, no, no, I know the other gal. She buys the outsides from him. So anyway, kind of a fun little thing. So these little outsides, that's what around the bobbin buys to put in hers. So they're the same thing. Or if you just want one already done, these are like 20 bucks. So they're kind of fun. We don't have very many, but there are, what is there? There's six different styles. So there's kind of a fun one. This one is like 1950s baking, which is kind of fun. There is a couple that are um, for your RV. And then there's even a dude one. It's got beer and barbecue and stuff on it. And then we have a couple... We have three different styles where we have the sets. We don't have just the aprons, but if you want the sets, um, these are the three that we, again, at this moment on the website, this is what we have in stock. So there's red, or there's this kind of chef one, or this is the beer one. So, and these are, it's um, 39, right? Yeah, $39 for this set. So that's what those are. Or 
And again, this one is another one that's just a classic is the microwave bowl holders. If you guys have not made these, you need to make these. And again, this is that whole idea that if you have decided just to go ahead and start with a bunch of 10 inch squares, that's all you need for these. Um, and so uh, the pattern is super simple or I don't know if you even need a pattern. It's just a couple of darts. You do have to use the warm 100 because the warm 100 is 100% 100 cotton. You have to use 100% cotton fabric and 100% cotton thread. And then what you do is you make these little microwave bowl holders. And then when you put this, put your bowl in there, put it in the microwave. Then when you pull your bowl out of the microwave, it's not super hot. You've got your little pot holder basically that is in your bowl um, or on your bowl. If you do use polyester, it will ignite in your microwave. So you wanna be careful with that. Um, the other thing too that we've mentioned before is that when you have a bowl of ice cream, they're good for a bowl of ice cream because your bowl is too cold. And then you just throw them in the washer, throw them in the dryer. So um, teenagers, college students, um, people who eat out of the microwave a lot, they will find they do not have enough of these. We have a drawer and they're stacked in the drawer because that you, we usually pr pretty much just use them once and then we throw them in the washing machine. But um, uh, we've probably got a dozen and we go through them all the time. Um, the other thing is, and let me show you this. This is something that's been around for a long time, but I want to show you a little, um, a different take on it. So again, using the warm 100, uh, we have these free little patterns and we generally give them out, uh, if somebody, uh, has the warm one, if you've purchased the warm 100, or if you just want one, we're more than happy just to take a picture of it. Or can we put this on the website? Is that something that we can do in terms of copyright? Or do um, we yeah, have to mail it's it a free to them? Pattern, but I can download it right from Mormon Natural's website. Okay, so we'll put that on there. So what's kind of nice is it shows you how to make one of these, but um, it also gives you the directions. So it's nice just to write that down anyway, if you make this for somebody but it shows you how to make it. And what you do with this is you just put um, three or four potatoes in here, put it in the microwave for six minutes and they come out perfect. And they truly do. They come out perfect. We are very old school and we used to only bake our potatoes. The whole idea of microwaved baked potatoes is just not a good thing, but this makes it exactly right. It kind of steams them just right in there. It cooks them uniformly so you don't have raw spots and hot spots. So it works really well. But I just want to show you a little trick and something that I've been doing just because we we go through a lot of these. It's the same thing if one is dirty and it's still in the laundry. Uh, we have a couple of them and we give them out a lot. So this is just a third of a yard of fabric. So it's a third of a yard of, of course, the potato fabric. And then this is the warm 100 and it's the 12 inches wide by 20 inches. And then all you do is you're just going to fold it right sides together. And then you already have the fold down here at the bottom. So just go ahead and sew up both sides so in just a little bit, just to give yourself enough turning room, turn it right side out, stitch that top closed, and then fold it up and fold it down and then sew down your sides and then you're good to go. It's a little different shape, but it's way more use of your fabric and uh, you don't have to cut anything. It's just one third of a cut, one third of a yard cut. And then you can still put um, five potatoes in there and it works really well. So anyway, we make those all the time. Again, warm 100. The other batting that you probably need to have on hand this time of year is the Insulbrite. You've heard it crinkling in some of the other things that we've made because Insulbrite, um, it has that little insulation barrier in there. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, it feels like tin foil, but that's not what it is. And it makes sure that it really works so that the surface beneath is not burnt um, and doesn't melt. And you don't want, people ask all the time, well, if I don't have that, can I use polyester? Well, no, polyester will melt and flatten and cotton will conduct. And so cotton will also not work. So you do need to use Insulbrite to make sure that your um, pot holders and oven mitts work properly. All right, let's see down here. What do we, have? I'm not sure. Oh, I know. So down here, so this is just another um, one of the um, 
mugs that we've decorated, but mug rugs, I just want to talk about mug rugs for a second. I'm going to tip these down so that I don't knock them down. Um, mug rugs, we used to, back when we had people that came into the shop for classes, we used to have a um, monthly pincushion club class and we had a monthly mug rug class because I love mug rugs. And so I have a little basket that um, sits in my kitchen and when the kids come over and have their little snack, they just reach in and they pull out the one that they want and they put it down and that's what they have their little drink on. And that's what a mug rug is. It's just big enough for your mug and a cookie. Um, so it's a little bigger than a coaster. And so they're kind of fun. And you can see some of the ones that we've done, um, you know, some of the different uh, monthly featured ones. Um, uh, way smaller, obviously, than a placemat and way more fun. So if you have, if you do machine embroidery, Kimberbell, I think, are they out to with number four now? I think they are number four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have fun, cute, cute, cute out. ones. Yeah, really cute ones. Um, this one, uh, it, you can do them as simple. I don't know. This pattern probably isn't still available. But um, you can make them as easy or as um, difficult as you'd like to. This one is kind of a new one. And we have some kits of this one with the pattern. And what we like to use is this stuff. Brianna, this is online, right? We ask yeah. all the time if things are online because um, it used to be that mostly people came in the store and now that people are mostly shopping online for curbside pickup or to be shipped, we just have to make sure that everything is migrated over. So what these are is this is a fusible little um, piece of batting that's a little bit stiffer. So it really makes a really nice mug rug. It just gives it a little bit more firm texture and you feel like it's just a little bit more substantial, which is kind of fun. So I like these because you can put down everything, fuse it all down. And then the other thing that I like to do is just bring my, my backing around to the front and make that my binding and it makes it kind of simple. So these are easy. And in this year's kit, um, we do have one of these in there so that if you've not used these before, you have your pattern and all of the, um, the drawings in there to be able to make that. Um, this one is a free download, right, Brianna? Yes. Do you have this one on there? Yeah, I'll put the link in the comments for you guys. She's going to put the link in the comments. And this one, uh, this one I think is called uh, Santa Mug Suit. Santa mug suit, I think. Um, it's just a couple little fabrics. Um, that's not a button. That's just a little piece of um, yellow that is fused on. And then the buttons, you could use regular buttons, but of course we just like the idea of the um, uh, bells. And then what holds it on is just a little bit of elastic and some buttons on the side. And so that's just a free little pattern. And again, the whole idea of packaging, you can package your mug rug in with a matching mug. Um, this is actually a mug box. And then again, um, it's always nice even just to add a little recipe or something else with that. Or some other kind of a snack, something else that could be um, hot cocoa or something that you would dip into hot cocoa, which would be kind of fun. And the other thing we just wanted to mention is that as if you really like doing mug rugs, if you get addicted to them like I have, um, uh, we have a tutorial, a binding tutorial, and I think we go over seven different ways to do binding. These were the projects that we did in there. So there's traditional binding, and then there's the piped binding is in there. We show you the measurement, what to cut for that, and then also, if you're bringing the backing over that little goal post thing, some of you guys have looked for that, that's in the binding tutorial. And so you can find that because whether you're doing it for a mug rug or for uh, a quilt, oh yeah, a quilt, um, you'll be able to do that. So let's see, let's talk about, I have a little crash going on here. Are we all good? Are they still yep. good over there? We're good. All right. Um, time for another door prize already. That's good. Am I talking too fast? 
I don't think so. I okay, think good. They're all good. They're all, yeah. Okay, good. All right. So this one, what is our, oh, we have a pattern packet for you guys. So for this one, we have four patterns. It's the mittens pattern, which we'll talk about in a second. The pocket scarf pattern, which we'll talk about in a second. And um, this fun little, this is our snowman towel. And so we have this pattern packet and the question is, are they ready? Um, yep, I think they're ready. The Grinch was a nasty man because Oh, I got my answer for you here. Brianna doesn't know the answer. Oh yeah, I do know that. Oh yeah, she knows because that. Because he's uh, Gene Patterson. His heart was too small. His heart was two times too, too small. small. Yeah, that's right. Gene Patterson. That's a local person. Fantastic. Gene, you might already have these patterns. If Gene already has these patterns, then we can do some finagling. Um, so the towels, we talked about the towels not too long ago, the idea of using Dunrovin towels. We just want to reiterate that. Um, very high quality cotton, uh, whether you're doing hand embroidery, fusible web, wool embroidery, whatever you're doing with it, they last and last and last. So if that's what you're doing, if you're um, choosing something that you want to put an applique on a towel, make sure that your towel lasts. Um, and then for scarves, these are, um, so a couple things here. So the pocket scarf, this one again is a classic. This is one of my favorite scarves and um, I'm gonna show you how you do it. There is a pattern, but I'm just gonna show you, it's super, super simple. So all it is is one yard of, I would prefer flannel. This happens to be that organic cotton, which is crazy, crazy soft. You can also do like a terry. We have a baby terry that's really nice. You could also use minky if you wanted to. But if you do a yard of it, um, what you're gonna do is you're going to cut that yard into um, four equal pieces that are 10 inches wide. And then you're going to sew two of them together end to end and the other two together end to end. And then put right sides together and sew all the way around, leaving a little opening that I have right here. Your little opening, you're gonna turn the whole thing right side out. And then I do, just for a nice finish, top stitch all the way around. And then if you're top stitching, you don't have to hand stitch this closed. It'll actually catch that. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to lift this bottom one up. So if you wanted to do some hand embroidery, if you wanted to do some machine embroidery, if you wanted to put some lace on there, leave it plain, whatever you want to do, you have an opportunity to decorate your pockets. And then what's nice about it is that when they put it on, you still have enough room that you can wrap it around if you want to, but you have these pockets. So the pockets can be to keep your hand warm, to throw your gloves in there, throw your phone in there, your keys or whatever. So it's just a really nice pocket scarf. Super popular, crazy easy to make. You can make it out of lots of different colors. And if you have a little person, you could adjust the length just a little bit so it's not, you know, down to their feet. But same idea, somebody who um, loses their mittens a lot, it would be kind of nice to have little mitten pockets. So that's what that is. The other thing, we're going to show this when we talk over at the minky part, but since we were talking about scarves, these are the cowls. And so we have both cowls and scarves. And so this is the infinity cowl. Um, the other thing we were going to show you is just an easy way just to, again, package your pocket scarf just with a bow. And again, I like the idea of um, ornaments, which I always think are kind of fun. Robert, and I'm going to... The one of the questions is um, the fabric for pocket scarves. You can mm -hmm. use any kind of fabric, flannels. Yeah. You could use like a brush cotton. You can use regular cotton. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just a scarf. So whatever you Knit. feel is most cozy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You can use anything you want. We tend to have, of course, cotton, flannel, um, that sort of thing in the shop because we're a quilt shop. But 
yeah, you can use anything. And um, she's right. Uh, I We don't have any batting or anything in here, so it's not super thick. But again, if what you're doing is just keeping your ears and your neck warm, then then it works really well. All right. So the mittens, I need to mention something about the mittens. If you guys, Brianna, did you fix this on the website? You know, I don't think I have. If you have purchased a downloadable pattern uh, for the mittens, you may not have gotten these three pages. Uh, that was brought to our attention by somebody. And um, so Brianna is going to scan these in and put those up there. So she just missed these. But these are your little templates. It's three pieces. Crazy, crazy, crazy simple to make these mittens. Oh, I've got stuff in there. But anyway, the mittens... The mittens fit really well, and there's adjustments in there for you to be able to shrink it. This is just actually a piece of wool, um, but you, and this is not, um, yeah, this is a wool acrylic blend. And then of course, just a little bit of minky, but I've made them out of flannel. You can line them or not. These are not lined, but you could easily do that if you want to, but they're just really big, fluffy, comfortable mittens, three pieces, super, super fast and quick to make. Um, the other thing that we have is, um, this was something actually that Brianna designed a few years ago. And the idea is that you have your little um, square for your phone and you plug that in, hook this on, and then your phone can rest inside of there. So um, she even wrote up this pattern, everything was fine. But what she used was this little, what's this called Brianna, a grommet? No, this yeah. is called a Grommet? It's a grommet. It's just the size of like for a shower curtain. For a shower curtain. We realized that you can buy just one. Uh, nobody wanted to buy 12 grommets, you know, to be able to make this. So we stopped making this. And then lo and behold, look at uh, by Annie. She came up with oddly similar. So anyway, so it looks really nice. And that's what it's called handle it. So we just wanted to mention this. It really is very clever. She omitted the grommet. We kind of felt what Brianna had felt is she wanted something that really wasn't going to bend. But of course, what she's doing is the stuff that she's using and there is nice and thick. So it works really well. You can also just put it on a door handle for your keys or something if you want to make sure that you don't forget something. But you know, what it was designed for is just to hang your phone right there while things are being plugged in if you're kind of in a weird spot. So anyway, for a techie teenager person, um, kind of a cool, cool gift. This one is, this one comes with or without the hanger. And so what this is, is this is a closet safe. And so what was fun about this is that, um, we were making this thinking that if you have a bride, um, maybe in the future that uh, maybe they're starting to plan different things and they have jewelry that they've picked out. If you have some sort of a very specific ensemble, you know, then you can go ahead and put jewelry. You can put different things in there, keep everything all together, maybe under things, something else that goes with it. And then the dress just hangs right on the hanger. But the other idea is that if you're traveling and you want to keep things kind of safe or just in your closet, it's just a little closet safe. So this one was made with a lining just to make it kind of cute so that again, if you are making it for a bride and you wanted to just add just that little bit of lace, this one was made without a lining and it's just um, a piece of cotton, it took just a half a yard of fabric and probably 20 minutes, super, super fast to make. And that was even with the hanger. It does have to be the padded hanger in order for it to work right. We tried a couple different ones, but it has to be the padded hanger. So that's the closet safe. Um, and then this, we were featuring this panel. Um, this panel, um, the fabric line is called Chill. And this is mochi linen from Moda. And then there's also some cotton pieces that go with it. So don't feel like you're in the wrong spot if you're at the website and you're looking at that pretty blue stuff. I think we still, Brianna, we still have some layer cakes even of chill, don't we? Yes. Maybe. And the chill, the collection looks nothing like linen. Um, no, it's, very it's weird. It's blue. Yeah. It's weird that she, yeah. But I love the linen. Yeah. And you'll notice we only, I think, got the pre-cuts of the chill because we loved linen more. Yeah. Yeah. The linen is fantastic. And so um, there's two different panels and it really is linen. So what is the price per yard? 
Yes. Yeah, it's it's linen. Um, and somebody asked um, a while back, well, does the linen wash well? Linen washes really well. That's why your linen blazers and your linen shirts are so much more expensive than cotton. It will last and last and last for forever. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit more luscious, but it washes beautifully. It comes out of the dryer super, super, super soft. So there's these two printed panels. They're both a little bit different, but they're just adorable. I don't know if you can see down here, this says we are like a snowflake, all different in our own beautiful way. Um, this one says snowflakes are blessings from heaven, kisses from heaven. And if kisses were a snowflake, I'd give you a blizzard. Mm. That's really cute. You can't see this one very well, but this one says, um, what a wonderful world. And this is gold. And it's not sparkly, sparkly gold, but it's gold. It's sparkly, but not, not overdone. Anyway, we wanted to make something out of this. If you've been in my house or you've seen different images from my house when we're filming in there, I am very, this is just my aesthetic. It's um, cream, white, and black, uh, maybe a little bit of gray. And so anyway, I just love this. And so what we did was we picked some of the other linen pieces to go with it. And then this is chill. This is the gold that is in their line. And oh, maybe I should lay some of these down a little bit for a second so that you can see these. And so what we did was we did this little quilt and we decided to call it two bits because it's two and a half inch squares. Um, and so um, we are going to do a class with this because we want to show you kind of some fun things that you can do with your squares and your weird shaped panels. Um, but that class isn't going to be until January. So during that class, and I think we even put the date on there. I think we even made a specific date. Um, the pattern will be available. Oh, wait, we have a hand up. Oh, I'm just it's four o'clock. Oh, okay. Oh, one hour. Oh, okay, we're good. Um, the pattern will be available as a download at that class. But what we've done is we did go ahead, we've printed off some of the panels and we have some kits. The kits that we have right now look just like this. It's these colors, it's these two panels. What will happen though is you'll end up with three extra panels. You can pick and choose what you'd like. If you don't want this one in there, you could put, um, this is our happy place. So you can move them around a little bit because you end up with some extra squares. So what we did with the three extra squares, you can make a pillow, you can make a decoupage plate, and what I did with this, again, I don't know what my thing was with decoupage this year, but, you know, once you get it out and, you know, um, what I did was I just took some of that foam core board and I took my little square and I wrapped it over and I just put the decoupage on the back of it. I didn't actually decoupage this. I didn't feel like I needed to, but I just used it as glue. And then I have this little frame and then I'm going, and I just haven't done it yet because I wanted to show you how I did it. And so that's all I did. And I'm just going to hot glue it down and I'll probably put some little sprig of something on there, but I just thought that it was really clever. And you could do that with, um, with any one of your leftover extra, extra blocks if you wanted to. And this, I bought this a while back, um, but I know that I got it at Walmart and I'll bet I didn't pay more than $5 for it. Or if you have somebody in your life that does stuff with wood, maybe you could have something similar to that that they could make. Um, all right. Oh, here's one of the kits. So yeah, this is what they look like. Um, it just doesn't have the pattern in it, but you, it comes with the pattern. So you're good there. Um, let's see, let's talk about, and then the toweling. Again, we wanted to show you, um, we're going to show you a project here in a second with um, the toweling, modus toweling, but it does come in a variety of colors. I had some down there, some here. And at the moment, I think that we've got, what do you think, Brianna? We've probably got 20 different ones at the moment. You've we've been finding all kinds of fun projects to make with it. Um, so we wanted to talk about hand embroidery. So um, hand embroidery, this time of year, it has a little bit of a resurgence just because it's cold outside and people are not outside doing anything. They're sitting in on the couch. And so it gives you, gives you something to do while you're watching It's a Wonderful Life or Elf or whatever. So um, 
again, uh, uh, Eliza is doing a project, and I think this is the one that is airing on December 22nd. This is our last one, and it's this little Be Kind. And so we show you how to go ahead and make it flat or do a little box bottom and turn it into a little pillow if you'd like to do that. And um, so if you did have other projects that you were doing, again, you could do something where you're doing a little wall hanging. Um, something that was kind of cool and we got those for this year are these little, it's a little tag. And so the idea is that you just do your little embroidery, wrap it around that, pop it back into there, and then you just put a felt back on the back of it. And so you could do a fun little hand-stitched gift tag or um, pendant. Uh, in fact, I think that's what they call it is a pendant blank. It comes with three of them. Um, the other thing too, is that if you're just doing some fun little embroidery, uh, you can do an embroidered ornament. And again, if you're just going to bring your backing around to the front, it's just really easy to finish off. Or again, you can put them on towels. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that you might have some little embroidery and maybe, uh, you know, this looks like a pot holder, but in my kitchen, this is called a wall hanging. We would not put lasagna on this chicken. But um, but what you can do is if you don't want to do a project where you have to choose and pick and choose and find all of the specific little colors, what you can do is Sulky makes a 12 weight thread that's this just this subtle variegation. And it's really, really pretty as a hand embroidery. Um, you can just use your regular size seven embroidery needle and do the whole thing in one color. And that's how both of these were done. So they were both done with just one um, color, whatever, one spool of thread, not all kinds of colors. So it's kind of an easy thing to do. We also put together some little pillows. So they're this size. So they'll look like this and it just says joy. And so all of your thread, all of your fabric, everything is in there along with your pattern. So we've got those. And the other thing that we're mentioning is that, um, and we show you how to use this in Eliza's class. And if you have the kit from us, you have a pre-printed piece of this, but this stuff, you um, put it in your printer and it'll print off whatever your image is and it's sticky, you peel off the back and you stick it down, stitch through it, and then add just a little bit of water and it dissolves. And so it's kind of nice because then you don't have to trace. I don't know if you can even see this with the light in your camera. No, just Brittany's shaking her head. Um, an intricate traced design and you don't have to worry about that, just photocopy. And that's why it's eight and a half by 11. And so that way you can just put it in your printer, copy it off, stick it down. And it's fairly inexpensive. Brianna, how much is this? 12 bucks? I Yeah, 12 or 14. It's a little over a dollar a sheet. Totally, totally worth it. And I say all the time, you know, that it always comes down to, do you have more time or money? I'm gonna grab something really fast that I forgot to show you. Oh, nope, now I can't find it, sorry. <laughs> tucking in and out. Um, the other thing I was going to show you guys is that the other class that we have coming up for Eliza is some pot holders, some really easy folding pot holders and coasters. So that was, I had that down there somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Anyway, um, kind of fun. The other thing that we've put together is we do have, if somebody is um, just starting on embroidery um, or uh, wool embroidery, we've put together just some little beginner kits. And so there's just a little smattering of things that they need along with some thread and some needles. This one is the hand embroidery one. So again, we've just got some basic Christmas colors, a package of needles some um, diaper flannel, which is what we always like to put on the back, and then some cotton. And then we've included a little pattern. And so the patterns can be, they vary, it just sort of depends. But um, again, I think I mentioned earlier that I love Christmas tags. And so these are just little hand stitched Christmas tags that are kind of fun for gifts or for ornaments, or again, whether it's a pin cushion or just a little conversation pillow for the bed, um, there's different words. So there's joy, there's um, thankfulness. What is this one? Sing. So kind of fun. So that's what's in there. And this is a local gal that does that. So, oh, and wool, 
the thing with wool, there's a couple things over there that we're gonna show you with some wool. Um, we showed these last year and these are just adorable. They're little ornaments. And so you just trace out your little pattern, fuse it down onto the onto your wool and then you just cut it out. And so there's little Christmas trucks little Christmas ornaments, all kinds of them. The other thing that you can do is that if you have some really cool fabric, um, we showed you this in Projects for Beginners. I think this was Eliza's, was this our third class, I think? And what we did was we just put fusible web, cut out our image and fused it down and then cut out with the wool. And if you just add a little tag on there, you can use it as a little ornament or a gift tag. And then these, if you haven't seen these before, um, this is called the stockings were hung. And this is really clever because what's in here, it's like 12 bucks. It's the pattern. You're probably just barely focusing on that when I put it down, right? Sorry, do you want me to put it back up? No, no. I've missed my opportunity to show you. And I'm gonna put it down. Um, so uh, this one, so see, she's printed much of it. So she's printed all of this stuff on there. That poor little snowman doesn't have much of a face. And then what you do is I just added a little bit of batting to the back just because I like that little bit of texture to it. And then you add your little bit of wool. So see, you can see what was added. So there's the stocking, there's the star. And then I just, you can add as much as you'd like. So I, we did put a little button down for his nose. And then we've done some of the greenery and then we'll probably end up doing a bunch of French knots for the berries, but you can stop wherever you want to. I've started doing some of the words, so we'll do all of the words. But um, the other thing that she's done is she also has sets of six ornaments. And so the ornaments kind of look like this. And again, you have to kind of almost um, imagine uh, what they're going to look like because she's left off some of the wool pieces. So kind of clever, but kind of smart to start with printed cotton and uh, that does a lot of the work for you. So I think that's kind of clever. So let's come over here. And then I realized that I forgot, we're gonna have to after here, we'll go back to do the bags, but um, let's, do, let's do another door price drawing. This guy, um, this is our snowman table runner. So he looks like this and um, super simple. He is all fusible web. And so it's available just to the pattern or we have a kit and the kit has everything in it. Um, I think even backing is in here. Oh yeah, even backing is in here because this is another example of where we just love to bring the backing around on top to be the binding. There's a fun little tutorial on how to do that. So um, for this one, let's see, what is the question? What made Frosty come to life? Are they ready? I think so. What made Frosty come to life? His hat, uh, Miriam McMichael. Miriam McMichael, that's exactly right. An old- Everyone got that one. Everyone got that one? Too easy. Yes. It wasn't any really an, good answer. An Are old really silk good? hat. Yes. No one said. I don't even know what the other answer would be. You're know. right. That might have been too easy. His carrot nose. No. His carrot. No. Was it? Oh, was no. carrot. No, it is that. I would have probably put his nose, but you know. Yeah. What was the game that we played last? Oh, at Brianna's baby shower. We had, what was it? The old nursery rhymes. Brianna got none of them right. I feel like I failed as a mother that I must not have taught you any of those old nursery rhymes. And do, have you got any of these right with the questions so oh, far? Yeah. Did oh, you know that it was his hat? I, did, I knew it was his hat. I, um, I honestly, though, did not know the number one movie. Hmm. I'm not sure I've seen the entire movie of The Wonderful Life. But you know what's a lot of... Oh, like I'm sure I we have it up at the cabin. I know, but I have to stay awake for long mm. enough. That's true. <laughs> uh, we're, we're watching it this Christmas. Yeah. That, and then we always have to watch Man from Snowy River. I don't oh, know why. Yeah. Paul's favorite. Paul's favorite. Well. Um, all right. Let's see. This, I'm just going to talk about this really quick. Um, table runners, always a big thing. Uh, it seems like this year, the people that have come into the store, everybody is making aprons. 
and table runners. Those are the two big things. So lots of options with table runners. This pattern is one of Deb Snyder's patterns. She's a local gal. It's super cute, looks cute from whichever side. Um, it's also cute as a birthday one if you wanna get this out whenever there's a birthday happening at your house. Uh, in the future when birthday parties are allowed. Um, so uh, kind of a fun one. This one, we have a few um, of the kits left. What makes this one really special is two things. One is it's all about the fabric that has all of these really cool snowflakes on it. But then there's also all of these fused ones. And the fused ones are already cut out for you. They've been laser cut, so you don't have to do all of the fusing and snipping, which is kind of nice. And then the other thing that we've done is, Brianna, are you putting the cotton over there? Oh, I can't. You grab all of those. Um, and so we also have these packaged. These are cut from a company in Texas, I think, right, Brianna? Lone Star Laser. Yep. Um, we order these from them. And so because we love snowflakes and we love Christmas and we hate cutting all of the snowflakes. So they laser cut them. They um, pick the fabric. We tell them what fabric we want. They put the fusible web on the back and they cut them out. So there's large ones. And I think there's six of them in here for 12 bucks. So you're paying for it, but again, more time, more money. Um, or there's the little ones. And the little ones come in white or in dark blue or a medium blue. So they're kind of fun and they're all kind of sparkly. So there's those options for um, different things that you're making. The other thing that we wanted to mention is we wanted to mention about striped fabric. That's all this is. This fabric is no longer available, but it's just two pieces. I think the seam is right here. Um, so that it's just two pieces of striped fabric sewn together um, to, to create just a really fast quilt. Um, some of you guys ordered the striped fabric. What was that, Brianna? The Hungry Animal Alphabet? Yes. Riley Blake realized that they had printed the stripe the wrong way. We talked about this at one of our fabric chats, but um, we didn't realize it until I think maybe the ninth or 10th person that we were cutting. I looked at it and thought, oh my gosh, that that stripe is wrong because typically on running yardage, the stripe follows the yardage so that you can get two yards so it'll fit on your 72 inch and you can miter it or whatever you wanna do. Well, um, they had printed it going the opposite way. So it was, every stripe was only gonna be 42 inches long. So they are reprinting it. It's going to come to us. We know who bought it. We've already called all of you guys and all of you guys will get the new stuff. So if you're wondering what to do with the old stuff, um, this is something that you can do is just sew two borders together. It makes it really cute. And again, what I like about striped fabric is that it's done all of the work for you. The other thing that you can do is you can just take the one stripe and turn it into a table runner. So this has got one fabric on one side, one on the other. And again, this fabric is no longer available, but you can see how cute it is because again, you know, the stripe does all of the work, so you don't have to do a whole lot of piecing in there. Um, we have a little video and it was one that we did, gosh, Brianna, what was that like three years ago? We did a 10, 20, 30 class. And at the end, um, they wanted to see it again because we demonstrated this table runner. And so we said, well, we'll just do a really quick little video and we'll put that video on our website. So that was way before YouTube and way before any kind of quality sound or anything. So I'm just gonna tell you that the quality of the video is super bad. It was filmed in this room. I was standing on one end and Brianna was clear back I don't know why. Why were you so far against the wall? But she was clear back on the back. So it's. No, I wasn't there. Who filmed it I for me? It must have been Carol and one of the girls. Oh. You know, I had been back to the shop to help when all the girls left. Oh, to went shopping. to go shopping. Yeah. Well, we don't know why, but anyway, you can kind of get the idea of it. There is a pattern, but we just like to show you that it's not difficult how you run your ruler. So you'll want to look for that. It's called the amazing, right? I wrote it down. The amazing striped, uh, strippy table runner. So um, always a fan favorite. And Carolyn, you guys probably, if you watched our Every Quilt Has a Story, last Sunday was CK, Carolyn Harris, and that was her quilt that her heart uh, Bargello that she made for her granddaughter 
Carolyn every year makes table runners because normally we have like a little Christmas bazaar that we do with our open house and she sells out of her table runners quickly. She usually has about 25 of them, but no Christmas bazaar this year, no table runners from Carolyn. So y'all locals are going to have to make your own or, you know, dig out the other ones. So anyway, so this is a couple options. And then we wanted to show you this. This is kind of fun. This is a super big cheater one. So again, these are, we've pulled those, Brianna went and grabbed these from um, over in the other area, but there are some really pretty Christmas ones at the moment. There's also some lime green ones. Brianna's Christmas colors are lime green and pink. Yes. Brian Robert loves it. <laughs> Lots of sparkles. Um, little uh, Christmas plaid or, you know, there's something a little more, uh, you know, just different regular colors also. So whatever you'd like. But anyway, I just want to show you this little trick. So this is a yard and a half of toweling. And what's nice about the toweling is it's about 18 inches. I think it's just a little more than 18. I think it's like 18 and a half or 19 inches wide. And um, it all is hemmed on the side. All of it is. It's all a really high quality cotton. All of it is made. Um, it's Moda's fabric. And so all you have to do is you cut off. This is a yard and a half. So it's 54 inches. And then what we did was we flipped it around the end of it, and we just sewed our little seam. Sewed it at this end and at the other end, and then poke this through. And what will happen is if you press it, you can have this nice little pointed end that looks like this. And then um, what'll happen is it'll kind of flop just a little bit. So you do want to go in and just whip stitch this down just a little bit, or you can put a little bit of fusible tape down there to hold that down. You could do whatever you wanted to after you've done that. You can go ahead and put tassels on it if you want. You can um, embroider something on it if you want. You can do some fusible web, anything that you'd like, but it just makes for a super fast, or just leave it plain, but it makes for a super fast finished table runner in seriously. I mean, if we're cutting 54 inches and mailing it out, all you're doing is putting two hems on it. So, I mean, even if you're dilly-dallying, it's gonna take you five minutes and a yard and a half is gonna cost you 10 bucks. So anyway. Really nice. And then this is a gal. She, these are just a little bit of inspirational things. So you can see if you wanted just to go ahead and add a little bit of applique to that, you easily could. So anyway, toweling. Oh, and then um, this one, um, we finished this actually. This was in a video that we did last year. So I think this one we made we were finishing up last Christmas. We've still not quilted it, but um, this one is available as a pattern um, or we do have kits on this one. So this one is a Christmas quilt. And so, I don't know, I think it was normally 69 for the pattern and the fabric. And I think now it's on sale for like 59. So this is more than your $20 and it's gonna take more than 30 minutes. So this is just a, wouldn't it be fun? All applique, um, super cute. And we have quite a few of those kits, I think, available. So let's see, we're gonna flip around and bring, um, all right, so we decided to do some uh, reusable gift bags and um, a couple reasons why. Um, one is because, oh my gosh, I love, love, love to buy Christmas gifts. I love Advent calendars, I love the 12 days of Christmas, I love every opportunity to, go kind of crazy on Christmas gifts, but I'm not a wrapper. That's why I like to put it in something with a bow and a, an ornament and make it kind of pretty in and of itself. And that's how I give gifts to my girlfriends. But to kids, you can't really do that. You have to wrap it. And so it's all of these. It's like, well, Brianna, will you help me ra um, wrap yes. the presents for the rings? And Brittany, help me wrap the presents for the Moskises because there's too many to wrap and too many things to do. Plus, Plus, it's that whole, um, you know, after we get done worrying about COVID, we should go back to worrying about the environment and, you know, all of the reduce, reuse, recycle, um, that wrapping paper, that's really crazy how much we have to buy and how much we throw away. It's a single use item that's expensive and not such a great thing. So we've tried to think of different things in the past of different ways we can do it. And of course, one of the best old standbys is, of course, a pillowcase, you know, so 
everybody gets a new pillowcase, but that's just one pillowcase for one gift because, um, you know, how many, how many new pillowcases does somebody need? And so what we decided is we were going to make gift bags. And so this was super, super simple. And what we realized is that one yard of fabric will make this size. And so this is pretty large. We did do a box bottom and we did a three inch box bottom. So it's a six inch box bottom. And for this particular one, we just did the drawstring. We really like though the fluted drawstring instead. And so you could do either one depending upon if you felt like you needed all of that room or if you felt like you could spare six inches because that's how much it takes to do the flute on the top. So um, this one is a full yard. This is a half a yard. This is the size. And there is a queen size quilt in that half a yard um, bag. And then this one is a fat quarter. This is how big of a bag you can make out of a fat quarter and there is zero waste. And so um, we did write up a pattern for this and the pattern is um, easy to follow. We show you how to do a basic drawstring top or a fluted drawstring top, which is kind of fun. And for your drawstring, what you can use, you can use any number of things. Um, it takes about, what did we decide, Brianna? It takes um, 40 inches, so just shy Ooh, battery is running out. Tell me when, because when the battery runs out, oh, it's blinking. Um, we're going to have to, then what, then they'll be able to hear us. They'll be able to hear but us. But they won't us. be able to. Yes. Oh, so yeah. then what we'll do is we'll have another <laughs> drawer prize drawing, maybe two. See how long it takes to get, um, get going again. You'll know when the camera dies. Okay. So I'm going to keep talking for just a minute and then we'll do door price drawings. So um, it does take cording. And so you can use all kinds of things. We have these little guys and there's two yards on here. So you'd easily be able to do a bag or two bags um, with that. The other thing we did some where we used twill tape. We really liked the organza. We thought that was kind of fun, inexpensive, and it adds kind of a little bit of color to it that makes it kind of fun. And then if, you know, somebody tied the knot too tight or you had to cut it, it's easy enough just to go ahead and replace it. But what's really nice about this is after these presents are opened, you just get them all back. Get them all back. And if you did, you know, I know that these are all Harpers and these are all Wyatts and these are all Eliza's. You know, it's kind of nice because you have this whole theme. Get them back. You can wash them, press them, put them away. And again, if you have to replace your cord, that's probably no big deal. The only notion that you need besides your iron and your sewing machine is you will need a purple thang because that's what we're going to use as a bodkin to be able to get the twill tape or the organza through there. So again, that's a fat quarter. That's a half a yard. That's a yard. What we did just to make it easy for you is we put the pattern. We won't have the pattern available as a download until after we do the video. The video is going to be up next week. Yes. I'm the winner of the door. No. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that we thought you guys could hear us, but not and see us. And what might but... be different is we have the logs on and the logs oh. are connected differently. Oh. Um, Last time we were doing our Tanner fundraiser, it died on us. You guys could still hear us because the mic itself is on top of the camera and um, not connected to the thing. Good so. thing we weren't cussing. <laughs> <laughs> we were just waiting. You guys are also here. Our numbers did not go down. They <laughs> waited for us. No, well, at least it's not our first time. That's true. We That's true. <laughs> We've, and we've gone dark. Morse code with our signs. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> that was horrible. That was Whoa, so bad. Learned. That was super bad. All right. So anyway, what we did is there's two and a half yards. So we did some boy Christmas. We did some girl Christmas. And then we did some traditional Christmas. And so with two and a half yards, again, you could kind of do all kinds of things. You could do fat quarter bags, half yard bags, full yard bags. The other thing too is you can just use whatever fabric you, you have. But we thought we would package some just for fun for you. And these are like super cheap. These, um, these are online. I don't know what Brianna priced them at, but, but nice and affordable. And then the pattern is in there and, um, we can do a door price drawing and let's draw for one. And what we'll do is we'll have them choose which colorway they want. So I have a really good question. What was the name of Rudolph's girlfriend? Oh, it's Barbara still on Barbara. Barbara knows. She was the one who got it right on. Let's see. 
Rudolph's girlfriend. Clarissa. Clarice. Clarice. Elegant. Look at you just rocking and rolling. Fantastic. What color would she like? Boy, girl, or traditional Christmas? Melanie, what is your choice of color? You pick which one you want. Boy, girl, traditional. Blue. Blue for a boy. This lovely pink. Or we have traditional Christmas. Just green and red. Well, when she gets back to you, let's move. And while we're moving, so now we have to go to a whole nother area. And then I was going to mention too, that if you guys are doing pillowcases, don't forget about a toddler pillowcase for like a travel pillow. So something in, um, and there's actually a pillow that they make. It's a 12 inch by 16 inch. So it's perfect for a car. So if you are still doing pillowcases, um, for Christmas every year, um, and then I think, I'm not sure if I mentioned or not, but in Eliza's class, when we start over in January, we're going to make pajamas because pajama bottoms, that's another nice classic Christmas gift is, um, pajama bottoms. I think everybody gets pajamas for Christmas, right? Um, sorry, I'm going to sneak in front of you here. Well, everybody um, needs them. Well, yeah. Yeah. The Rang babies always got, um, socks and underwear. Always. <laughs> Yeah. Always, always so excited. They still get we socks and underwear in their oh, stockings. Oh, wait. Oh, they can see mom. They can't see me. Come there. over here so they can see you. Um, yeah, we always got in trouble because we would run outside uh, with our socks on and no mm -hmm. shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so they always needed we, socks. Yeah. And then we kept getting in trouble. So we're like, oh, who needs shoes? And then we'd whine to mom because they were slippers on our feet or oh, her feet hurt. And yeah. Yes. Terrible. We never were. No. no. And that's why I don't, my hand knitted socks do not go to these children. No. I do have some fancy socks, but I still usually get yes. interested. No. Because both no. my babies can open our front door. Luckily, we've got, we're gated in. Um, so they actually can't get to the street, but oh, they just take off running. <gasps> Every terrible. time. Terrible. And the dog just think it's awesome. Ruger's frolicking and totally in the way. And Benelli's like, oh, wait, I can't catch you. Wee. But yeah. All right. So we're at the minky section. So we love minky. We love minky. And there's a couple of, I shouldn't have turned this right side out. Um, you were I, was gonna, I was going to show them and then I thought, oh, wait, I already said the whole thing closed. So I can't do that. But anyway, um, we love minky. Um, who was it? Mary, Mary, my new friend from Vermont. She, um, uh, I did some personal shopping with her last week and she got some of these scarf kits and it came in the mail. And, um, she said, Oh my gosh, now I see what you're talking about because it's funny that there's a product like this um, you know, at some of the department stores and people think that it's the same thing. It is not anywhere close to the same thing. This stuff is really, really high quality. Um, it, it washes and dries and looks exactly the same year after year after year after year. So, um, it doesn't peel up. We have some minky quilts that are super, super old and they all look great. So, um, it is a little bit spendier because you're looking at anywhere from $14.99 a yard up to $23 a yard, but it's also 60 inches wide. So you can do a lot with it. So we're just going to show you a couple of fun things and a couple of, um, some of the things that are new, um, for you guys this year and, um, new to us. And, uh, we have a couple of classics in here. So one thing that's new is this, and Brianna, these are on the website right now, the strip sets. Yes, the strip sets are on, um, as well as the two yard cut. So the cow print, you guys see okay. that they're Google, you don't have cow print. Oh, sorry. Does that sound um, terrible? <laughs> <laughs> You're hurting um, me. So, but yeah, they are. So I'll, I'll go right in right now and I'll move the minky category up to the top. So if you and is that what you call it is minky or do you call it's it cuddle? Cuddle slash minky. Um, so if I'll move the category. And that's just a brand down. thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's just one is Shannon brand and one is, is it Benertex? Is another brand, okay. but same idea. Yeah. Okay. So it's moved up to the top right now. Yep, <clears throat> so this is a strip set. So it comes in, I think that there was maybe eight different colorways. These are 10 inch wide 
by 60 inches long. So all you really need to do, sew all of these together and you have got um, a really nice little lap size quilt. Uh, if you wanted to make it a little bit bigger and use a full 70 inches, um, so that you've got a 60 by 70, just let us know. That could be something that we could do as personal shopping, or you could call Deb and say, hey, I want the purple one, but I want two that'll go with it. And we'll throw those in because these, um, the 10 inch strips, they sell individually for $6, but it's a way better deal to get all five of them, right? To get all five yes. of them, it's like $24.99 or something. So you get a dollar off if you get a set of them. So those are kind of fun. That's a new packaging deal. That's kind of a cool thing. And then the other thing that's new is the infinity scarves. And so the infinity scarves have been around for a while, but they've packaged them a little bit different. And um, the other thing that they've done is um, they have some new colors. So this one is the silver fox. This one is the brown fox. These two are new. And then um, there's a new purple color. And then there's a mint, there's a teal, there's a couple of others. And the pattern is really simple because all you're doing, and it comes with a pattern, and um, all you're doing is you're just sewing it in tube, you're twisting it one time before you sew the whole thing closed. And then I was um, turning this thing right side out, but you can see that then you end up with a little hole, turn it right side out and whip stitch that closed. But I want to show you this because this is not the scarf, this is the cowl. The scarf is, 36 inches long. And that's what they put um, in the kits here. But we like a cowl. And so I don't want to put this on because it will make my hair, um, it will cause um, uh, static on here. my hair. Okay. Will you put it on you? Okay. So the my cowl, and Jordan, will you call dad? That's who keeps buzzing, but he knows okay, we're busy. Just, just make sure me. life is good. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the cowl. Up my yes, I know. Mess up my so see where the cowl fits. I like this better. So this is 30 inches, whereas the scarf is 36. Yeah. So the scarf hangs down farther, but then this part is warm instead of all no, of this. If I had a coat on, there wouldn't yeah. be any yeah. outside goodness. Yeah. So we like this better. So we just want to let you know what the difference is, is that if you're ordering these, it's a scarf. So it fits a little bit different. Oh, yeah, put that one on. This um, minky is no longer available, yes. but oh, it's, it's like so we're in a cat. I know. <laughs> I know. It's super nice. So what we did, though, was we cut up the seal minky and I think we have it in three different colors and these are the cowls. So we have this really pretty ivory. We have a gray and then we have a black. And you will get your infinity scarf directions along with the little thing that says, oh, it is 30 inches, just to make sure that you know what the difference is and that you're getting the, the seal cowl and not the scarf. If you do get one of these um, and you want it to be a cowl, just cut off six inches and use that six inches for matching cuffs on your mittens and you'll be all set. The other um, pattern that's kind of cool. Um, this one is by McKay Musers. And so what she does, she has a couple different things on here, but the one that I really like to mention, and I have these made and I forgot to grab them at the shop, but she does fingerless gloves. So all it is, it's the simplest thing. She just does this 10 inch piece and she brings it around and she doesn't do a seam. So your thumb fits through there. So just, she just does, and she gives you the directions for it, but you could almost figure it out yourself. Super, super simple. And then um, this is another new thing from um, Shannon, and it is a two yard cut. So they come like this. And so it's easy to ship. It's a little bit heavy, but it's easy to ship. And Brianna, how much is the two yard cut? Uh, it's probably a little bit more than our $20. Oh, sorry. Don't like that sound. Um, they're about, they're about, um, 40 bucks, 36 bucks. Yeah. The, the Lux ones, so the pretty designs, the cowhide, no, not the cowhide, the Lux the red. Um, this is the Lux. The things that look like animal-ish, they're about 40, and then the regular ones that are just like the cowhide or just a flat white, those are $36 for the two yards. The but they're huge so it's two yards so they are 60 by 72 so this one we just have this laying out in the bottom of the boys's teepee we didn't do anything to it it's just nice and thick and luscious but this one this pattern is for the lux throw and we have brianna are all of these on the website for downloads the lux throw um some of them are 
Um, I'm slowly adding more on. If you're missing something that you see here, shoot me an email, whatever, we'll, I'll send you anything. Um, it's all on their website, so we can totally share it with everybody. Um, also, when we post this video on Monday, I'll have all the links on there for you. Okay. Because um, we also have hard copies. So if you've ordered some Minky and you just, if you put in the notes that you want the hard copy packet, we'll throw this in for you. So there's five little sheets here that has recommended, you know, tips and tricks for sewing it. And then it's also all of these patterns. So the infinity scarf pattern is in there. Um, this is in here, the Lux throw. And the Lux throw, it's not so much that you necessarily need a pattern for this, but what this is, I'm gonna lay it this way so you can really see it. This is the two yard piece. We've just folded it over sewed around, left a little opening, turned it right side out, and then top sewed. And so it is a nice size and super heavy, super, super heavy. So really, really nice. There's no batting in there at all because there's no need for a batting in there. Um, the other thing is that we decided that we wanted to start doing these labels and, uh-oh, where's our little package? Oh, okay. You have it, the EQ. So this stuff, um, for those of you guys that were familiar with Printed Treasures, Printed Treasures is now gone. Um, that's no longer a company. But these guys, it's EQ Printables. And EQ Printables is a fabric that is specially treated with um, a product so that you can print on it with your inkjet printer, not your laser printer, inkjet printer, and then... Um, use that for whatever you're using it for. So if you're putting your fit, your pictures on there, your photos on there, whatever you're doing, and then you peel off the backside, throw away that paper, and then you're good to go. Well, what I did is I made a bunch of labels. So on one sheet, I was able to get 16 labels. So I made those. And then what I did is I put a little um, space in there so that um, and I also put a square so I knew where to cut so that as soon as I fold that up like that, I have, you know, made by Nana, Merry Christmas 2020 on the back or whatever I have. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the seam allowance so that you can, whatever it is that you're making, just so they don't think that you bought this at Target, you have your little, you know, Nana or Yaya or Grandma, whatever, whatever, whoever you are, you have your little label in there, which makes it kind of fun. And so, um, I thought uh, what I could do is, um, if you were not sure about how to do that, we could show you this up close, but I thought maybe I would do um, some printed labels for somebody, if somebody wanted them. Um, and you could just tell me what you wanted, because like even these, um, I didn't need 16 labels, so I made some for me, some for Brittany, some for Deb, some for Brianna. So um, anyway, so if somebody wants, printed labels, or if you, the other thing that you can do with this is if, if you have a picture, you can put a picture on your label also. If your family can't be together and you want to put a photo on there, you can do that also. So um, let's see, we know that Rudolph's girlfriend was Clarice. What was the name of Rudolph's best friend? I got nothing. There's something, no, there's something. Um, the, these guys, the, I got nothing from these guys. Oh, they, they, don't know. they don't know. They don't even know who Rudolph. Do you know who oh, Rudolph, Rudolph is? Clarice. <laughs> Clarice? That's Rudolph's Hermie. girlfriend. Hermie. Hermie. That's right. Ah, there you go. Who got it? Nella Louise. Oh, very good. So I have, this is what we can see here. And oh, this okay. Is YouTube so I oh, gotcha. Exactly what they're asking when they're okay. Asking. Very good. All right. So we'll find out. Brianna will uh, message and we'll find out what you want. We can do some emailing and we'll get your, I can get those uh, printed off this weekend and get them right in the mail to you. So you can still add them to your little projects, which will be kind of good. Um, the other thing that we have with Minky real fast is this is the self binding. This is also one of the patterns and we show you how to do this in our little binding tutorial, but they show you how to do it with your Lux. And again, this will be a free download or you can ask for the hard copy one, but this is just 10 inch squares of Minky sewn together. 
And then um, the backing just comes over and not only makes the binding, but actually even makes a border, which is kind of fun. So real easy way to make a small quilt a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to come up to the front just for a second um, and show a couple other fun things. So another type of minky that we have is this double sided. And so one side is kind of like suede and the other side is this fun like Sherpa kind of feel. So if you're doing something like slippers where or mittens, if you really don't want to line them, but you want them to seem like they're lined, um, these little slippers were made out of this because there's a a light tan and then there's kind of this camel color. And this was this pattern and it's an indigo junction panel pattern. And so there's an adult or there's a children's pattern. Um, there's a couple others. If you just like the idea of minky, I don't know if you notice these slippers match the little pillowcase over there. Super simple. This is two pieces. There's a little U piece that comes around the side and then there's the bottom. And so there's the outside and the inside. You can make the outside out of cotton and the inside out of minky, both out of cotton, whatever you'd like. This one is cotton on the outside, minky on the inside. Um, you can get some other fabric so that you have the little um, grippy fabric bottoms or we put leather on the bottom of these. But these we put um, melted glue just from your glue gun. If you just put little dots on there, then you have your little um, homemade little grips on the bottom. So somebody didn't, doesn't slide around a little bit. And then the other thing that we like to... Um, feature is Carol's Zoo Patterns, and she her patterns are fantastic. She's got hippos and monkeys and oh, a polar bear. I've made the polar bear. He's super cute. All kinds of them. This one is the moose. But what we what we did is we just put a little um, pom pom, and so now he is Rudolph. And what's cute about her patterns, or easy about her patterns, is that first of all, the eye pieces come in there, and it's those. Um, um, toddler proof so they actually screw inside there they don't come off so that's kind of nice but what's really nice about it is that it's two pieces and so what happens is this is one piece and then you flip it over that's the other piece this is one piece flip it over and that's the other piece so there's one piece for the back one piece for the front and it's just a right and a left and then the only thing you do is that you might find where when you cut it out, there's a dart that's going to go there. There's a dart that's going to go there, but then you're done. Well, this is the trick to it. The trick is that you just need a piece of fusible interfacing. So take your piece of fusible interfacing, trace your pattern, and then go ahead and fuse it to your minky and then sew everything the way that you normally would. And then what happens is you don't have that weird stretchiness where you're kind of fighting a little bit with weird little puckers or weird things happening because it's already um, stabilized in place. So fusible interfacing is the key. And um, all of these super, they really are simple to put together because they're just two pieces. So um, we have a lot of those, but this time of year, the polar bear and the um, moose are extremely fun. The other thing that's kind of fun is that, so it's not just this two-sided Sherpa one, but we also have this one and it's called Fleur. And it's one of those that there's really no wrong side to it at all. So all you have to do with it really is you could just put a binding on it if you wanted to. Um, and if you want to curve the edge, you can even just sort of leave it plain. The other thing is you can um, put a piece of cotton, just do right sides together. So all they're around, turn it right side out, top stitch it down. And all of these little things, you can do your fusible web. And um, this is also McKay Musers. We love her patterns. And so she's got all of these, she has all of these different little designs for you to put on whatever you'd like. So if you have a large quilt, a small quilt, a wall hanging, whatever you'd like to make. So this one, I think that there's, well, is there only six in this one? Maybe. It seems like most of them, there's at least a dozen. So this one is the wild animal ones. Um, this one is fantastic. This is the Polar Express ones. Um, this one is the farm one. You can see all of the different animals. And that's what's on this one. You can see how big it, oh, I'm sorry. Were you wanting to, look at the pig. You see the pig down in the corner? Can they see that? Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. He's adorable. 
And, all and the, the sheep. And all of the patterns um, that you're seeing here is all in that cuddle minty category. I put everything in there just so you can see it all. And see, that's how big it is. Now, you could shrink it down. You know, you can um, do different things on your um, uh, printer to make it something bigger or smaller. But I think it's just a really nice size. And I don't know if you can see it. Is it? Oh, you can't really tell. This is pink and the bunny is cream colored. But anyway, kind of fun. So just something kind of fun, just um, super soft and um, homemade makes it kind of a... Uh, uh, we like Nikki. I think anything that we... So, uh, fun fact, in oh. Greece, it is 3 o'clock in the morning, Saturday. She is, I love her, she's our little She's owl. fantastic. Yes. And then Sylvia thinks you need a drink. She says, you've been talking for a long time. I probably do need a and drink. And we're all talking about dinner. And then I'll talk about dinner. They're bringing them dinner as they're watching us. Uh, I'm going to get a drink. And while I get a drink, flip around to that quilt. I want. I forgot to mention this when we were talking about this quilt that this one also has minky, minky on the back, and um oh, and lint because we just barely finished this. So minky on the back, and even minky can come over to the front. And I just wanted to show you a little trick about this. If you bring minky over to be your binding, minky has no raw edge. Once you've cut it, it's like finished. You don't have to fold it in and fold it over again and do double fold or single fold binding. You can just cut it, fold it over, sew it down, and it looks perfect all the time. It doesn't fray or do anything weird. So this side you can see went down. And over here, I'll show you what I did is I cut three quarters of an inch past. So I trimmed off the most of the batting and cut three quarters of an inch. And then I don't know if you can see that right there, but that is this. It is half inch um, steam a seam tape. So all you do is you un you peel this off and you can see that it's down here and I've ironed it down. And then all you do is you peel off the paper. Oh, I was going to get this. I probably should put my glasses on so I can see it. Here we go. So you peel off the paper. And after you've peeled off the paper, this is sticky. And so then all you have to do is bring your minky down and it'll stick. And it'll stick in place until you then iron it. Now, it's not permanent. You're still going to have to come along with your sewing machine and just sew that down real quick. But what's really nice is it's not going anywhere. Once it's all, it's just stuck down. It's exactly where it needs to go. Fuse it in place and then you can stitch it. So I just wanted to show you minky on the back of the quilt. Fantastic. Bringing that minky around as binding. Super, super simple. Priceless. All right. Um, okay. Well, we're going to do a door price drawing. Oh, I don't know why I have all of these names. I, I feel like I... Um, I was trying to come up with questions that we haven't asked before because we do trivia games all the time. Yeah, and especially and Christmas. They have been Especially there. local people. Barbara Hartman had to run some errands. So she missed all the Rudolph ones because she is yeah. on it. So she's back though, guys. So she's back. Uh-uh. Barbara. Massage your fingers for a second because she mm. is wicked back. Warm up your fingers. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because we have a panel. Christmas panel. This is the Christmas panel section of the show. We're nearly done, but this is kind of fun because we're going to show you four, five, five super cool tricks about panels and Christmas sewing. So my question is, what is the name of the Grinch's dog? Oh, that one. Oh. I know that one. Come on, my Grinch. Is it easy? Lady. I never watched the Grinch. Oh. You don't know what it is? I don't. Max! Barbara Hartman! Barbara Hartman! Oh, crazy! She had to win. Woohoo! Barbara Hartman is our local music teacher. Yes, she is. We love her. We love her. We feel for her. I know she's having a hard time being a teacher right now. Although, no, kids are back in school. Well, kids are back in school. And they can't sing because... And they're spreading Corona. Yeah. I don't Those even know. Those of you guys who have maybe not seen the Grinch, the the, the Grinch with um, who's him? Yes, uh, um, is not on Netflix. It's very very good though. 
But um, Disney has an animated one that's on Netflix for free. That's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And it's very oh. fun. It's cute. It's different. Um, I think I happen to like that. What is his name? <laughs> Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Go with Jim Carrey in it. Um, I like that one. It's a little more edgy and more adult humor and stuff in it. Well, but, uh, but it's Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Yeah. So it's good. So whether you watch the Jim Carrey one or the one free on Netflix, totally watch it. Yeah. The Grinch. You don't even have to have a kid there. No one is going to judge you. <laughs> Dad judges me all the time. <laughs> Tell him you're, you know, with kids. totally <laughs> judging me. Yes. All right. Okay. So I'm going to show you um, first. Let's see. We just had our panel Palooza. That was our Cyber Monday. I'm going to put this down for a second. That was our Cyber Monday thing. And now all of these are gone, right? Is that right, Brianna? Are there any Northcott trees oh, left? There might be a. Maybe you, maybe nope. no, Brittany no, Brittany is saying no. Are there any wreaths left? Yes. Green in green. green, green wreaths left. You know what happens is when we do, um, when we do a sample, whenever we want to make something to show people how cute it is, we always, every single time we choose whatever we think, um, will be the last to sell. Because we think, oh, you know, if you're already going to do red and green, those are the Christmas colors, we'll do it out of blue. Well, then what happens is whatever we make it out of is what sells. So um, this is kind of fun. Does that show up pretty well? Can you see that, Brianna, that that's all yeah, spotly? So, um, so this was super simple. So again, I don't know what it is. It's a decoupage theme, I guess. But um, what I did with this one is I took this panel, cut it down, and I took a canvas frame. And again, you know, you could just hot glue it. If you're into that, you could staple it. You could do whatever. But there's something about decoupage that I like because it just keeps it nice and smooth. It absolutely is not going anywhere and it's just fine. And then what I did, once I got that nice and tight, then what I did is I took my awl and everywhere, I knew that these little lights, they come like this and there's 20 of them on there. And I think now you can get LEDs and you can do different things. These are battery operated though. But um, And you can buy them anywhere now. Walmart oh, has like yeah. this whole little twinkle light section right by yeah. um, their big outdoor light section. So Yeah. Yeah. So you can get them anywhere. I knew that there was 20 little twinkly lights on here. So I took my awl and I poked 20 different ones. And then I poked it through the back and um, turn it on, turn it off. Works really great. And normally what happens is I just have just a little piece of duct tape um, and I'll just duct tape that in place. But I have to be able to turn it around, turn it on, and then um, turn it off. And then the other thing that I did, let me turn this off for a second, is um, I did the same thing with this one. So we just quilted it and we quilted it fairly close together so that um, we could withstand poking it. And then where I did poke the holes, I kind of went around that quite a few times so that there wouldn't be any fraying. Uh, it did not get binding on it, but uh, the rest of it was all done. And then same thing, I poked those same 20 lights through there. Um, but then what I did is I just put a, um, a piece of uh, elastic back here so that it holds this on here so that you can flip it up turn it on, turn it off. So anyway, if you were somebody who was fortunate enough to get one of these, that's something you could do with it or with the wreath. And again, that's just a canvas frame. This was the same thing, same, just a Christmas tree panel. We have, I don't think that there's any more of these. Maybe there might be some of these left, but there are other Christmas tree panels. And again, it's the same thing. This was just a um, canvas frame. And then for this one, the size frame that I picked, um, my panel was only 24 inches wide. So if you look up close, you can see there's a little seam right there. And I had to add just a little bit because it wasn't so much. I mean, I didn't want it to end right at the frame. I really wanted it to wrap around so that it was like frameless. So I did have to add a little bit. So you might find some of those panels that are long and you might just have to add something so it fits the panel properly. But again, all I did is I just decoupaged it down. And then for these, I just took my needle and thread and I just sewed them on um, because your needle goes right through that canvas, super, super simple. And if you look on the back, I think I can flip this around. Oh, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there's 
there's um, threads there where I went from one spot to the next spot to the next spot. But anyway, so another super simple way, and you could easily turn that into an advent calendar if you wanted to. Um, I am a kook about advent calendars. I love advent calendars. My children do not. My son is standing um, next to me and um, he comes by this naturally because when the kids were little, I never let them make Christmas lists because I didn't want to know what they wanted for Christmas. I didn't want them to think that that's what Christmas was about. It's not about the presents. And so, um, so I wouldn't let them make a Christmas gift, a Christmas gift list. Um, but now that I'm a Nana and um, <laughs> the, you know, rule, anything you want the rules are different. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Okay, we're going to keep going because we're, we're close okay. to done. No, they think it's fine. And it's three o'clock in Greece. <laughs> it might be four o'clock now. She might have to get up for work soon. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're going we're gonna to power through this. Yes. All right. So, so there's a lot of different ways that you can do advent calendars. And I have to tell you that every year when we order our fabric, I don't think I say no to any advent calendar, right? I mean, if we see it, we order it because there have been years when we have run out of advent calendars. Our Christmas stuff starts coming in in May. And usually by this time of year, I think we're down to, I think we've got maybe six that are left. So this particular one gone, but I just wanted to show you that the traditional way of doing advent calendars is like this. Well, they do, there's different ones. But ones that look like this on the panel, let me show you. The panel ends up looking like this. What happens is you just bring this up like that. And then you bring up the next, oops, bring up this one, bring up this one, bring up this one. And then after you do that, then you end up sewing down those lines. So it ends up looking like this. So you've got the piece on the top, and after you've brought all those up, you have your little pockets here for your little Bible verse and your little candy cane and the things that go in there, um, or the little note that sends you to the present that they get, then it's kind of nice. Well, I thought, you know, if wall space is an issue, you really could do an Advent pillow. And we were talking about that because some of the people from Wednesday, we were talking about not having enough wall space. And, um, and that's what somebody else said. Oh yeah, all they've got is doors and windows. And so you can hang them off of a door, but I thought a pillow was kind of cool. And so all you have to do if you do this is you just have to know the size. And so this was a 24 inch square pillow. So I knew that I had to be 24 inches. So I just kept shirking these up just a little bit more, a little bit more until I had the size square that I needed. And then what I did was I just sewed this little binding into the seam so that I have just a little marker that goes around, you know, for whichever day um, so that we know, you know, where we're at. Because it's kind of a funny thing that now what they're doing with the advent calendars is they're not putting the numbers in a row, which is sort of funny. But anyway, so advent pillow, kind of a fun idea. Um, the other thing that I did is this one was just, uh, do you see what I see? And I think that we still have in the store one or two of the great I am, which is very similar. It's the same artist, this Lynette Anderson. I love, love, love her, her stuff. And um, this was one, what did I do with, um, um, Eliza and I were working on this one. I thought I set them down here. Eli oh, here they are. Um, this was the one, if you watched our class when Eliza and I did the fusible um, web ornaments and gift tags, this was the one that we did. So all we did was we took the fabric and then we put our fusible web on the backside, cut out all the way around the edge, fused it down to a piece of black wool, and then just cut a little bit of an edge so it looks like um, an outline. And then we did just put um, some floss in there for a little hanger, because then all you have to do is as you're doing your advent, instead of hanging your ornament on the tree, you can hang it um, up on your, on your board. And then this was the same thing. I just put this, but instead of putting it on a canvas board, I put this on a um, poster board. And so this is just an inexpensive, what, $2 poster board. 
And then that's what this one is also. And then Brianna, I think we still have a couple of these panels left. This was the same thing. This was a really pretty tree and then it had this border at the top and at the bottom. I cut off the top and then I sewed it onto the bottom so that there's a couple little pockets here. But then same thing, I just put it on a, um, oh, one more. I put it on a poster board. And um, this one, instead of decoupage, I taped it. So it's taped. And because then later, if you decide you really do want to sew it up and do something different, you haven't done anything bad to it. You can untape it, do whatever you want to do. You're all still good. And so again, um, fun as a little advent calendar, 12 days of Christmas, um, you know, pin the ball on the tree game, whatever you'd like to do. And I don't know if we have any of those panels left. I, might, Are these I, gone? I might only have a few, but you'd have to call the shop, email me, email Deb, um, whatever you want to do. But the other fun thing with the whole panel option is if the fabric collection comes with a border print, you can take that border print and create the pocket. It doesn't have to have that fun border on the panel. Oh, right. Just take your own fabric to make your fun all little pocket goodness. Right, that's exactly right. Um, the other thing too is there's a bunch of um, advent, advent panels that I just simply cut up um, and I don't do it any way the way that they tell us to do it. So like this one is an example where um, there's a lot that are designed like this and you'll see these on the website and what they do is they, give you, they always give you the directions of exactly what you're supposed to do and you cut these out and how you're supposed to make these little pockets so that every pocket goes over. Um, the spot that's indicated. So you have this fun little advent calendar. And most, most of them are about this size. So again, you can go ahead and put your loops and hang it on a door, depending on what space you have, makes it kind of nice. But for me, I keep cutting these things out. And so what, what you can do is you can just put them on some cardstock so that you have one that um, goes on the tree, one that goes on the corresponding present. So you can do them that way. Or um, this one, same thing, this was this one, and um, it actually had a whole bottom. It looked like this. So here's the top, here's the bottom, same thing. I was supposed to make um, pockets to go over it. But what I did instead was I went ahead and fused these to fusible web, cut them out, and then I added just a little bit of a hanger and put it onto some um, black wool. And then I cut out around that and here's my little hang tags. And so then what happens, same thing, you know, so they've got um, these that go on the presents or however you want to do your advent calendar. And then they can go ahead and just hang them onto the corresponding Part. So you don't have to do all of those pockets. And then you can find fun ways if you're going to attach them to little bags, attach them to little things. Um, this one, there's one, this one. Oh, this is super cute. I don't know how many of these are left, but I looked and I do know that these are still in the store. And these are little stockings, little Advent stockings. So you can do this. I had a little thing that I thought would be kind of cute is just a rope and some little clips, some little um, laundry clips. And um, all you have to do is... And if you guys are looking for these, um, they're the Frosty is what the collection. So it's gonna be Frosty Advent or Frosty Stockings. Frosty Advent Stocking. And um, for these, what we did is a couple years ago, we had these and so I actually made them into little stockings. So what I did was I just took a corresponding fabric um, and then just right sides together, stitched around, turned it right side out and then I just folded it over for a little hem, no lining at all. And then again, then you can just hang these little stockings up on the tree or wherever you want to. And again, they've got their little candy cane and their Bible verse in there or, you know, whatever they'd like. And then I have another little present. Um, so let's see, Brianna, can you tell, or we'll know later, I guess, whoever is the first one to order this, the little stocking frosty. Um, uh -oh. I gotta do it that way. We can look it up. We'll be yeah, able to look it up. We might not know until tomorrow, but the first person to order the frosty stocking panel, advent calendar panel, 
We have one of these left, right? Do we still have this left? You didn't put this online, right? The the advent? No. The stockings. The stockings. The stockings are not the big stockings or the little ones? Big. The big, no, the big There's ones. only one. That's why it wasn't online. I see. I thought, felt that I scammed that. Because so the first one to buy the frosty advent will get the frosty stockings. They're big. They're not just big, they're humongous. These are for very good people. Very good kids. They're humongous. And then they come with tags and a few more of the little ones. So kind of cute. So anyway, whoever's the first one to buy that, this is the very last one. We'll throw that one in there. All right, let's see, Advent, Advent, Advent. Lot, uh, again, I think five, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And a lot of these, six, six, oh, six, sorry. So a lot of these candles that you guys are seeing and everything, they are actually in the Christmas category. I'll move that mm -hmm. up in, when you click shop online, click fabric, you're gonna see Minky first. Um, I will move the Christmas category up next to Minky so you can see it all in one place. Perfect, that makes it nice and easy. That's good. All right, I'm gonna show you a fun little trick. This is super simple. This is one of those, um, it's gonna take uh, less than 30 minutes. I think less than 30 minutes, I guess it kind of depends. Less than $20. Um, so it is an easy way to make a, oh, we can move that. Yeah, let's move that out of the way. We can even move this. Thanks, honey. Um, it's an easy way to make a, um, uh, Tree skirt, I was thinking Christmas stocking, that's not it, a tree skirt. So all you have to do is you're just going to take, and a lot of it depends on how big you want your tree skirt to be. So I would suggest that you take um, a yard of two pieces. So you've got a yard on one side, a yard on the back, and then there is a batting in there and you just need to quilt it. Quilt it however you'd like to. So if you wanna just stitch a couple of lines on there or a bunch of lines, um, that's what's going to take the time really is to do all of the lines. So quilt all of that or if you've been practicing your free motion quilting on your machine and this is a little bit of practice, no one's ever going to see this. It doesn't have to be super perfect. So it gives you an opportunity to play around a little bit. So once you've quilted it, then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a circle. And you want your circle to be as big as you can make it with what you've quilted. So the easiest way to do it really is to go ahead and get a string and a pencil. And I would use like a chalk pencil or something, something that will, um, will show up. And if you put a tack in the center of it with your string, you can run a circle almost like a big, huge compass to go ahead and mark your circle. Or if you have a large ottoman, a hula hoop, something else that's going to give you that circle, you can do that any way you'd like to. So you can do a circle on the outside and then you're also going to do a circle on the inside. And after you've done that, I'm gonna put this big one down and I'm gonna show you in a smaller section that'll make it a little bit easier for you to see. Um, it's going to look, ooh, can they see that line? Oh, there's a line on there, a circle. And so what we've done is, let's see, maybe, can you see that one better? So there's a line on the outside and a line on the inside. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your scissors and you're going to cut out on that line, on the outside and the inside. And if you see somewhere in there, there's a line. Where is, oh, right there. So you're gonna cut from the center circle to the outside circle. And after you've cut that out, this is what I have on one side, this on the other side, it's going to look like this, right? So again, this is just a smaller, easier to see version. And so you can see how that's gonna lay. So then you can make binding if you are a purist and you like to do that. I like to make binding, it doesn't matter. Or you can use this um, double fold uh, pre-made binding. And so all you're going to do is first, you're going to just put your little edge on this straight edge right here. Sew that down, do the same thing over there. And then you'll take this and you're going to go all the way around. Now you have to decide for yourself if you want a tie to be here and a tie. And if so, just start with a little length before you go all the way around and then end with a length. Or what I like to do when I put my tree skirt down is I just overlap it because my tree skirt will fit like that anyway, so it doesn't tie. 
But anyway, super simple tree skirt. You don't have to have anything fancy. And again, if you wanted to do something kind of fun, you could add all kinds of things to it. You could do some sort of a oh fabric that the kids have to Darla decorate. Darla that piece would make a cute candle decoration. If you it would. A That's a great oh, idea. It would. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whatever. You can wash it off. Freeze yeah. It. Good idea, Darla. Good idea. That's really I good. I like it. I like it. I like it. So simple tree skirt. Now let's talk about simple stockings. People, um, we have all kinds of different stocking panels. Same things. I think there's four, five. There's six. There's six. <laughs> six. So there's um, there's this one, and this one is called, uh, where's my glasses? This one is called Better Not Pout, and this one is number 37703. This one is Better Not Pout 37702. And the difference is this one has a little one for the kitty and a little one for the doggy. So and those numbers she rattled off, that 37703 or 02, um, you can search that special number in our website, and that is a unique number just for that. That's a little way. skew for it. So, um, so there's these um, down here on the bottom. What's this one called? This one is called 29 20. Days Till Christmas. Uh, 25. 25. Where did you do your math? I'm going to drink. It's my glasses. My glasses. <laughs> My glasses. 25 days till Christmas. <laughs> this is the Thanksgiving one. 20 yeah, days. Okay. Yes. So anyway, looks like this. So there's these four. And then these cute ones. I think this one is called Peppermint Reindeer. And this one is called Holiday Traditions. And then this is super funky one. This is like Brianna's Christmas colors. Snowell. I love stockings. it. Stockings. I know. That's totally Brianna. So anyway, I want to show you, in case you're not sure how to do a stocking, I'm going to, should I take these down? Maybe I'll take these down for just a second. And let me just show you something. So I meant to cut these, and I did not, but let me just show you. <laughs> Brianna, is this on the website as a download? Uh, no, but it can be. Ooh, put this up. So we give this out all the time. This is just a little suggested drawing for your um, stocking and then the directions. And I have a little bit of artwork here to show you. But really, whatever you'd like, if you want something with a little more flared top, a little bigger foot, whatever you'd like, just find the stocking pat pattern that you like. Or, of course, you already have a pattern where these are already drawn out for you. For me... I like to make stockings um, and then we change out the ornaments every year. Every year you get a new ornament. And so like this one is crystals. And so I try to pick fabric that um, is, you know, really fits them. This one is paws because it's all about candy. Um, this one is mine um, because of course it's beige. Uh, who says this one? This one is Brianna. We are not surprised. I'm quite I know, sure. right? I know the little <laughs> reindeer. Anyway, so there. Are, this one's Eliza's little frozen one. But anyway, so they're um, they're all kind of fun. And so I just like to pick whatever fabric that I'd like. But these are kind of nice because they're a little bit more unique. And the other reason too that I like a stocking like this. Everybody knows which one is theirs. And the other thing is, we had somebody who came into the store last week who has a new baby and she wanted to make a stocking that matched everybody else's. And of course, all that fabric's been gone. So if you have one theme of Christmas stockings, it might be a little bit harder for everybody to have one that matches. But if you kind of do your own thing, it makes it kind of fun. All you need is a half a yard of fabric. So um, we do have it, um, the directions in here, but all you're doing is you're taking, here is, I don't know if you can see this or not, but for each one, you've got, oh, so this is the lining. And then I, I should have made this more clear that this one is actually going to be the front of it and the back of it. So then all you're going to do is somewhere, you do have to put your little hang in there. You're gonna flip it over, right sides together. And then on the inside of the stocking, not the outside of the stocking, you leave a little opening. 
And so then you're going to back stitch. So all the way around, all the way around, come back and back stitch. Turn the whole thing through there. And then what will happen is you turn it right side out through that little opening. And then all you have to do is whip stitch that opening closed. And then looks like this. You're just going to tuck that thing back in there. Go all the way down, tuck it all the way down in there. And then there's your little stocking and you're good to go. And so if you wanted to do something fun when you're making it and you want to put a little bit of minky or something kind of fun at the top, you can go ahead and do that. You would do that the exact same way. So anyway, we have the directions and you're downloading that for them. And um, this is just the, what I use. I kind of use this same shape all the time for mine. And I just have a big piece of felt. And this is the pattern that I use for for our stockings. And I was going to mention that when you do this, that's the same way that you make a bag, right? You guys have ever made the bags. So you have your lining and you have your outside. You do it exactly the same way. And the project for beginners that are, is going to air Tuesday. Tuesday is a bag. Is a bag. So yeah. if you felt like that was yeah. not quite clear enough, Eliza yeah. makes a bag. We to make that kind of technique. Yes, it's exactly the same way as this, where we've got the outside of the bag the lining of the bag, and we have handles. We sew the whole thing together, tuck the lining in there. So that's exactly right. It's done exactly the same way. And then these, we have a few of these kits left. What, Brianna, maybe six of each. This was kind of fun. This was a class. Um, and then again, you know, because of COVID, things are all kind of different. But um, this is a crazy stocking. And so the idea, what we did is I put together all of these really fun little textures. So there's some wool in there. There's some plaids, um, some woven fabric in there. And then it's a paper pieced full sized pattern. And so then what you do is you go ahead and do your paper piecing. So it looks like this and you go ahead and sew your pieces on there. And then what's fun is since it's crazy quilting, the whole idea is for you to play. It's really all about the lines and the intersections. So you can either mess with all of those really cool stitches that your um, sewing machine comes with that you never use, mess with those kind of fun threads. You can put some buttons on there, some fusibles on there. I feel like I collected more stuff than I put on. So I've got some stockings and I'm just trying to decide what will go on the top. I found this stuff, I think it was some sort of a bridal thing or I have this llama minky. Oh, that would be really pretty. But anyway, so I collected more things than what I actually put on there. But anyway, there is an ivory or there's a dark and I don't think there's very many left. But what it is, is it's all of the weird stuff for your front and the full size pattern. And I think they're pretty much they're like 10 bucks, but they're kind of fun. So that's a fun little stocking. So, um, oh, my gosh, I made it to the end. Oh, was it an hour and a half? Uh, two and a half. No. Yeah. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Two and a half hours. Said, you did a great job. They oh, loved it. I'm so we sorry. I hope you guys Rachel got some food. Had to go make um dinner for her family. Even made it back. Oh, Rachel. So watch it. <laughs> I am glad. I do need a drink. Oh, and they so didn't even think cool. they oh, pretty. There's a ton of them that are still from the very beginning are still commenting. Oh. Yeah, Amy is still in. So it was great. So oh, they gosh. enjoy it. I think they're used to us. I was sorry <laughs> that we talked for so long. I'll take one of those. I'm sorry that I talked for so long. I don't know what it is. Talked for so long. You know, um, Julia we said it was the best two and a half, half hours ever. Oh, it was like a really long movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah well, it was. Gosh. Thanks for the Hannah show. In there. Well, yeah, come around here so we say goodbye to the others. Yeah. Come around. See, if Dad would watch the movie, he might be sleeping. Oh, Dad would not be watching. That's why yeah. we can get away with everything because our husbands they don't watch it. Even Brianna's husband left. Yeah. He <laughs> doesn't know. <laughs> the kids. He, was born. he still doesn't know I told the world about the glitter ball. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't watch it. He doesn't know. Secrets. I'm telling him all the dirty secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, thank you so much for hanging in with us oh, for good. a couple yeah. hours. And we do have, there's some other things that we're doing. And if you watched those, the yeah. other videos that are still going to be coming, the gift bags, that kind of thing. Um, and then watch the last three of Eliza's because those are also really more mm -hmm. related to gift giving. And um, 
If you've not been doing yet the 12 days of Christmas, be sure and check that out. Go to our website uh, and there's a special little tab, right? The 12 days. Yeah. It says Specials. 12 days. Click on that tab. It's going to be mm -hmm. um, one through 12. You'll see the most current yeah. one. Um, tonight was day four. So if you're interested in what the other three nights were, if you missed it, uh, I think there's still some stuff available and just click down and see what's going on. I don't know what, yeah. I think we're sold out of a lot of the kids stuff. Yeah. I think the kids stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that was kind of fun. And then if there's something on the website you are looking for that you cannot find, email us. Mm -hmm. You can email me, you can email Deb, you can email info at fabricpatch.net. Email us, whatever you got. Um, and I'll, when we post this, I'll link some of those, um, those free patterns. Cause I know like the stocking one is not on there yet, but I can quickly, um, get that into a PDF for you guys and load that up tonight. So if and you, you guys put are, that on the website so they don't have to search. For yeah. I think what I'm going to do, um, is I'm going to put a free patterns category in our website. Mm -hmm. Cause there are so many. Mm -hmm. And if you've missed a video or a, um, fabric chat or something, you may have missed that free stuff. So I'm going to start doing a little free section. Good tab, idea. Um, because there's, we have a lot to offer you guys and yeah. I worry that if you guys miss it and you think, Oh, yeah. I'm not going to bother them with an email, just bother us. Yeah. Way. And if you want hard copies, just let us know. And yeah. we're more than happy to mail those out to you. And if you, again, if you need help with personal shopping, Deb yeah. loves it, loves it, fights over the phone. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> we want to do it, but again, yeah. we talked about that. We're chatty. Yeah, Deb's, obviously. Deb's <laughs> yeah. Ooh. All right, we're not going to keep you any yeah. longer. Thank right. you, thank you so much. You guys are fabulous. Us. We'll see you again thank before you. Christmas to wish you a Merry Christmas. Yeah. But thank you, thank you, Bye. thank you. Bye, you guys. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.